What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Reality Recap Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household of Amanda. We got Justin here on the switcher. Is that Justin what we on the it? switch. On the switch. He's switching. Uh, Allie is um, in St. Paul Down online. Bad. Down bad. She's fighting for her life. Yeah. She, what do you got? Stomach flu or something? We we told her to stay in bed, but she she wants to take notes. You there? Hello. I love notes. <laughs> <laughs> sounds so sad. No, Allie. Uh, well, we would we want Allie to get better. Obviously, drink your fluids, and if you are happen to be listening to this and you're not feeling well as well, get drink better. You know, it's flu season. You never really know. Our special guest today. She returns for her second appearance oh, on God. The Vile Files. You know her, you love her, you loved her so much the first time because she just spoke from the heart. Aww. We brought her back. The one, the only, Charlie! <laughs> I was like, is he gonna say the last name? <laughs> Hi. Char- Charlie, how are you? She before, right before we started, she said how much she hates podcasts. <sighs> is that because you're just, you can't help but be honest? No, I just... I don't know. I just feel like they always get you in trouble. And Did you get in trouble last time you did the show? No, I just don't like media news coverage. I just don't like how they take things from like one podcast. Mm. I'm sure you guys get a lot. You're like, what? This is like one sentence. <laughs> I'm just always just an overthinker too. I'm just... Natalie's new favorite thing is to read. Uh, <laughs> You're like, what is my pr- favorite new thing? <laughs> press clippings of like ridiculous articles. Yeah. Of, like the shit that, you know, we will say on this show. What was the last one? Us Weekly put out um, us Nick saying that he's not going to smoke weed again once the baby comes. And then in the article it said, <laughs> in quotes, How'd you sleep last night, you little bitch? <laughs> Natalie said sarcastically to Nick. I was like, whoa, it's crazy in print. <laughs> That's <laughs> insane. When you read it, it definitely does not come across the same. You're I'll like, be honest. <laughs> you almost makes you like second guess everything you say. You're like, oh my God. Uh, it's like a hangover from like your podcast. Truly. Like it's like hang- anxiety. It was meant to be a joke. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then you read it and you're like, oh, wow. Now everyone's going to see that. Uh, and my grandmother always, she keeps up on those little tabloids. So she'll call me and be like, Mija, I read this today about you. And I'm like, please stop <laughs> reading those things. They're not real. So uh, we have to be good. PG-13. We'll be, no, it's no fun. <laughs> It's no fun. It's the holidays. Yeah. Uh, what did you do this weekend? Did you, did your fiance, congratulations, by the way, on oh, getting yeah, engaged. Oh, yeah, I'm engaged. Come on, an applause. It's beautiful, right? I joined the club. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the club. Yeah. Did your fiance take you on a romantic date this weekend? Like Natalie took me on one. He did not because he was golfing all weekend. Oh. Typical fiance stuff. No, he had his friend's 30th birthday. They golfed. We've been traveling a lot, but we are, go- we actually just left Palm Springs last week. We did like a little engage moon. Ooh. If that's even a thing, but we did one. Why not? Now it's a Make thing. A thing. Sure um, kind of like how you guys do baby moons, right? You guys going to do one of those maybe? Well, we did a lot of traveling leading up and now yeah. we still might do something. I don't know. Something somewhere we, maybe we could drive to. Yeah. yeah. We went to yeah. Palm Springs. It was really nice. We were. You guys we, should go check it out. We flew five weekends in a row. Yeah, it's a lot. Ooh. For Ooh. a variety of reasons. It's been a heavy travel year for everyone, I feel yeah. like. So wait, where'd you guys go on your date? I didn't have a cute date at a Christmas party Natalie, yesterday. What'd you guys I think do? on Friday, she was like, well, she was, she's like, when did the Packers play this weekend? And I was like, well, they actually don't play on Sunday. They play on Monday. Oh, and is that then, tonight? That's tonight. Okay. Go Packers. <laughs> it's Monday. Um, and then she later on, maybe it was the next day or later that day said, we uh, have a date on Sunday. And I said, oh, wow, babe, thank you for setting those up. You're so romantic. I have uh, my bachelor party this weekend. So he's leaving me a to bachelor. go on his bachelor party it's a, it's in a, Vegas. I'm a reluctant that? bachelor party. Oh, my God. I I would have forgotten. I honestly didn't really want one. I'm not in the party I phase really of my- I didn't really want one. You like that? I didn't really want one. No, <laughs> why aren't you guys going to the spa or something? I'm looking for it. I would have gone- Don't do, do it. <laughs> I would have gone to the lake house. This is, no, this is Natalie's fault. <laughs> no, I- <laughs> We were with all of Nick's family, for all of his friends from like high school, college, like mm-hmm. all these like down home buddies. Okay, there were and they're three, all like, we've three dudes go. there. We <laughs> got to we, my- we go. We got to do a bachelor trip. We got to go somewhere. And I'm like, you got to get the band back together. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you should, you know, like 
you know. Sure. And the whole time I'm like, hey, we could go to like a Packer game. We have the lake house up in Wisconsin that I got. I'm like, how about we just go and play cards? But these guys live in Wisconsin. So they're like, no, they don't fuck go, that. Yeah. Like, exactly. We want to get out of the cold. <laughs> we want to go somewhere. And I'm like, hmm, maybe... You know, Fort Lauderdale would be so nice and lovely. Yeah. Like some quiet like cute St. Augustine. Um, a quiet little... T- and then they're like, Vegas. No, of I, course. I, no, what happened at this point, I'm thinking, what would just be the easiest thing? Oh, yeah. Vegas for sure is the easiest. So... <laughs> totally we, the middle. We threw... It, it is. It's yeah. easy for me. It's a, it's a puddle jumper of a flight from L.A. And mm. so then we kind of agreed it would be Vegas. Then I went back to my life. They went back to theirs. And Natalie kept was like, hey, are you going to do the bachelor party? You should like hit up your friends. And I know like my groomsmen are supposed to be involved, but like, you know, they got their lives too. It's just a very like last minute thing. How many groomsmen do you guys, or like how many groomsmen do you have? Six. 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 That's a pretty solid group. Yeah. And you have six bridesmaids. But I don't have a best man. Why? Because. I'm actually interested. Now I'm doing wedding. Why don't you have a best man? Because you like all your friends evenly. well, in a way, I have four of my brothers. you have a brother? Yes. One of my brothers is in the wedding. So he's but, not your best man? No. Got it. <laughs> and then I, four of the groomsmen are groomsmen that had I gotten married at different stages of my life, like at 25 or 30, like at, at, at a, for like a three year period, they would have been my best man. And then like life happened. So like four of those guys would like, would have been my best man had I got married to that. Phase. So they're just all even. So they're all just kind of like my groomsmen. I have two maids of honor. Okay. Yeah. Are, so, are they your sisters or your friends? They're my friends. Okay. And then my bridesmaids, my four bridesmaids, four other bridesmaids are my sisters. Oh, so you have four sisters. Yeah. You have four sisters. Oh, cute. Okay. Uh, so a little different. Yeah. Yeah. But There's yeah, no now, rules in weddings. I learned. Kept reminding me to schedule this whole thing. Yeah. I would have forgotten all about it. Truly. So you're blaming Vegas on her? <laughs> I, I appreciate Nat. No, she would. He's like, honestly, thank you for planning the Vegas. She trip. really, all she because was, of you. she really was being thoughtless and uh, thoughtful. Thought, thoughtful uh, and selfless. She was being thoughtful and yeah. selfless and, <laughs> and knowing that she thought I would appreciate getting together with my friends. And so she kept reminding me to do it. So thanks. <laughs> so we're doing it then this weekend. And anyway, so, so Natalie, is that why you went on a date and preparation Got planned it. a very romantic day out in Venice. I was like, Cute. since I'll never see you again. Yeah. You're yeah. going to Vegas. Let's have since one last, last date. <laughs> the last time we'll love each other. <laughs> yeah. Before you fall in love with some stripper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, enjoy your time. Yeah. Really? Just yeah. have, have yeah. the best time ever. <laughs> Don't pull a jacks. <laughs> yeah. Everyone will be, won't be pulling a jacks. Um, no, we went to Venice. Nellie planned a couple, a couple She's massage. Like, Let me enjoy this nice day. <laughs> we did a little shopping, got a couple's massage, and then we went to the place. Um, we went to Felix, where we had dinner before we got engaged. So a little Aww. call back to that. That's super cute. Yeah, it was really cute. We. And when are you guys getting married? Early next year. Yeah. Okay. Ish. Early ish. A lot the, going on after the, after the baby. Got it. Yeah. So. Do you guys know where? We yes. Do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it a secret? It's in Georgia somewhere. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so back where, where yeah, you yeah. grew up? Okay. Yeah. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, Wedding stuff too. is so fun and stressful. It's crazy. And with a baby. Yeah. Yeah, you're a trooper. I feel like I haven't really given the wedding as much love and yeah. like thought because I'm just... O- like more overwhelmed by the baby, a hundred percent. Um, and how big is your guys' of, wedding? How many people are you guys like, inviting? I think one seventy five. Oh my probably. god, that's a big. Wedding. I mean, we'll see how many people come. That's, yeah, we just sent out save the dates. It's kind of sad. I feel like, you know, I definitely would have loved to do the a bachelorette trip mm-hmm. and like a bridal party and do and do all of these things. But it's like when you have a baby, it's like what I feel like a baby shower is probably a little bit more. I need more baby stuff than I need a toaster. Yeah, you know, 100%. so it's like, let's celebrate the baby more than, I mean, Nick and I have been together for almost four years. Like mm-hmm. we li- we've lived together for three years. It's like, let's just focus on the baby. But it's kind of sad. I wish. Do you think you'll get to maybe between the baby and the wedding itself? Like, I know it's obviously like so busy with a newborn, but do you think maybe then you'll be able to like, yeah, maybe even like one steal day away for a bachelorette? Yeah, like, like a bachelorette. They day. can go to Malibu we'll to like something. the wineries for the day or something. Nick, we'll do something. Yeah. I'll take you on your bachelorette. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I, no, I'm not saying we'll, but like, we'll get know. a bunch of penises and we'll drink out of them. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll wear the hats and do the whole thing. Yeah. I Me do just think- like some floppy dildos, just like. <laughs> 
wow. just, just me and me and Nick on like a sprinter van yeah. <laughs> with a stripper pole. No, those like pedal bikes. <laughs> oh no, that's so sweet. No, but I, I when I say we, I mean I, I will help her plan or insist that she does something to mm. celebrate herself. She, since she was so selfless in her, you know, cooking her child in yeah. her stomach, <laughs> her. <laughs> sacrificing her body. Speaking for the of, sake of our child. how are you feeling? Lots of kicks. Like, how's it going? Oh my god, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. They're going to put that in quotes yeah, in an yeah. article. Yeah. They're gonna Natalie, like, Natalie Joy her, says her unborn child, no. the bitch is crazy. <laughs> yeah, honestly, you can go ahead and quote me because she is. And uh, I, that, yeah, we had a massage and I was trying to relax. And on during a prenatal, it's not as enjoyable as a regular massage because you lay on your side. So there's just really no, like, they can't really get in there. It's kind of, you're at an awkward, you know. And the entire time, I was laying on my left side and she was just going ham on my left side. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I need to lay on my back. And she was like, OK, um, I guess we'll work on your legs then. <laughs> like, OK, thanks. The entire time it was just like no relaxing. And then as soon as we got done, Nick was like, she's still kicking. I was like, nope, she's asleep. <laughs> She is knocked out. It was just the very specific time when maybe she you really might have been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do feel like um, I definitely feel like I know her personality a little bit, you know, so it'll be exciting to finally meet her and see if it matches up to how she's behaved inside of me. It sounds like she's going to be like a little firecracker. No, for sure. It Can't really wait. it really has helped me not help me or just made me envision you know, like fast forward, like 14, 15 years when she's a teenager and like, you know, every once in a while, Nellie wants to vent and I have learned, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. <laughs> still learning. Still learning that when she's venting, she's not looking for help. She's just looking for either, I can either listen or, or even better yet. Say that's crazy. I can be like, yeah, fuck that person. <laughs> yeah. You know, like fuck them. Mm -hmm. I hate them. Should we kill them now? And I can like imagine, you know, her being mad at our daughter and having to like <laughs> decide yeah. whether I want to like be like, but babe, she doesn't really mean it like that. Or be like, yeah, no, fuck her. Yeah, you know, she's yeah. Grounded she can her. walk home from yeah. them all. Yeah. If she's not going to answer your calls, Should we just when get you rid go of her? to pick her yeah. up, <laughs> she can walk home. I was telling my mom about that. And she was like, no, you have to be able to go to Nick and say, She's a monster because you can't go to the monster and call them a monster. And I was Aww. like, you're right. Was I a monster, mom? And she was like, sometimes. <laughs> it's a rite of passage. I apologize for my behavior when I was a, a teenager to her all of the time. All the time. I feel so bad. She did call uh, 911 on her brother. Okay, well, he pulled a foam sword on me, so you would too. <laughs> oh my god, a weapon! <laughs> a weapon! They, sh they showed up like four cop cars because I'm like, my brother just pulled a sword on me, and they're like, holy <laughs> shit! So they like pulled four cop cars. My mom's at work. She had like couldn't afford a babysitter. It's just me and my brother at home. <laughs> and then they pull oh, up and they're like, gosh. can you bring out the weapon? <laughs> my brother comes out with these two foam like play swords, and they're like, this could hurt, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> They call my mom. They're like, your kids. Your kids. Yeah. Oh. oh, boy. Yeah. The plights of a single mother. Mm -hmm. Golden bachelor, everybody. Golden. Trying to get her on the show. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, really? Yes. We want her to be on. She'd be a star. She would. She's... Did you apply? Did you have her apply to the last one? No. no. Oh, okay. She, we suggested it, but she had some reluctance. She was nervous. But I think now seeing how it plays out, she's say, like, Did she like he's like cute. I could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. She's I down. enjoyed the whole process. Yeah, I think it was down. cute. So cute. Yeah. Heartwarming. Before we get into paradise, because there's a lot to cover. So we, we have so much to cover with with uh, Charlie. We, we'll, we'll get into a little BIP recap, their season finale. We got some scandal a brewing on the beach or off the beach now with yes. uh, the Avon and Kylie doll. Did you hear about that, Charlie? Oh, yeah. I was so surprised yeah, by that. I know. I was well, shocked. I, I want to know what it is, too. Well, I wish that people had to like, by oath had to tell us all the information of everything by at the oath. time. So like I didn't have to go search for it, you know? Yeah. And like tell me who, what's their Instagram, who's the girl? Well, Need all the information. We love us getting on the show. Mm -hmm. I uh, I think we might uh be getting Kylie to speak her truth. Oh really? Oh well, that's exciting. Yeah. She should. Yeah. She should. Maybe yeah. that'll make her feel better too. Well that's all we really want for her to heal on the yeah. file files. 
No. Well, it just happened, right? Just happened. Yeah. So we'll see. We, you know, yeah. we want to give her her space and time. Well, I but... think they could only just now announce that they're not together because the yeah, finale so she might have known aired. for a while. So they might have been. Yeah, can you imagine? Oh, so I thought. See, that's where I would need all the information. I thought everything was going good, and then something happened in in this past week. Um, and it came out. I think it might have. Let me check Reddit because I think they originally posted two photos of them, like couple photos, yeah. and then she deleted them Uh-oh. and then uploaded the story. Let oh, me, so she must have recently found out. So I think I felt like it was like someone maybe like messaged her or told or sent photos. Yeah, like maybe like it was just very quickly. Hmm. Well, well, Avon some... posted his apology. This yeah, morning. he owned up to it. He's like, yeah, so he's I saying did it. he did something. Yeah. Well, while well, Amanda does her research, we. We have to talk a little bit of Taylor. Um, last week, we propo- proposed the question. Well, we've been very, very pragmatic, I guess, on this show. When no, no, no. It, you have been very I, <laughs> Sorry. I've been pragmatic on the show when it comes to the uh, Taylor and Kim saga. Recently, you know, Taylor was named Person of the Year for Time magazine. And in that interview, they brought up the whole fiasco between uh, Taylor and Kanye and Kim. How many years oh, yeah. ago was that? Seven, eight, a while back. Mm-hmm. It's a long time ago. And then Taylor's new bestie, Brittany Mahomes, recently did a Skims campaign of which many Swifties were upset about that. And I suggested, listen, we don't, as far as the Brittany of it all, I don't think anything's really changed because, again, I think the shoot probably happened long before they became, her and Brittany became friends. Also, like, we don't know whether, you know, maybe they're friends now, but I'm sure Brittany Mahomes wasn't like a Taylor Swift stan where like she was following Taylor's career seven years ago. So. Well, I feel like also she's just getting money. Like, sure. I but... wouldn't say no to a Skims campaign, even if you're best friends with like, I feel like when it's when it comes to like money and yeah, opportunity, I feel like you have to put your some things aside. Well, clearly Taylor has. And isn't Taylor technically new to the like NFL circle? Of wives. Sure. So they don't have, they shouldn't like give up everything for Taylor. Well, Taylor she hasn't be like, seemed to have a problem with it. I mean, they're yeah. still, they're still friends. But I, I did some research because I wasn't sure. I've been, I've suggested that maybe Taylor and Kim are cool. You know, like maybe it was more about the Kanye of it all. I could see that. Well, um, it's my understanding that Miss Taylor is very much not indifferent about it uh, when it comes to Kim Kardashian. Still, and I think you you don't have to really look much further than the Times article. You know, when she was asked about it, you know, when she her her quote trash takes itself out, and oh. she referenced mm-hmm. how upset that whole period was. Like, are you aware of what happened? I am, but I guess I wasn't like die hard details into it. Well, essentially, do you know? Yeah. You know? So the that song famous by Kanye oh, yeah, West, yeah, yeah. where he's like, "I made that bitch famous." Uh, and then he's like, I might still have sex with Taylor Swift yeah. or whatever, because I made that bitch famous. So he called her to mm-hmm. like say, hey, I'm doing this song. These are the lyrics. And basically, T- Taylor was like, I don't like, no, <laughs> I don't want you to say this, but, you know, whatever. And uh, he released a song. And then Kim released an edited clip of this phone call that she recorded so oh, Kim yeah. recorded the phone call and then edited it to say that Taylor was like, yeah, sure. Do it. Go ahead. Post so it. wild. And so wild. that's kind of wild. And yeah. then put it out there at a time where it made Taylor look like a liar. Yeah. That mm-hmm. whole time period was very. And then <laughs> could you but could you imagine someone doing like, what, it... what would be a real life version of someone doing that to you where let's say it was a I'd family drama pissed. and and then all your friends thought you were a liar and question your integrity and questioned everything about what you had just had had said before and like the emotional damage that might have done so i would understand i would not potentially be over it i mean i've held i've held grudges for far less yeah well it's so malicious like i think so often it feels like words can get kind of inflated around other people and so like these feuds are so like media fueled that like maybe at the center of it there isn't a ton of hatred there's just kind of like a PR hurricane, but with this, it feels like it was very specifically like an act of shittiness and an act of a lot of maliciousness. And so I would see why Taylor like wouldn't want to just like be like, oh, I'm, you know, it's like, I feel like you can not forgive without being obsessed with it. 
Yeah, you you can let it go and have it not be something that's top of mind. But if someone brings up that person's name or you happen to run into them, like you are not indifferent. Like you still have a strong sentiment towards that person. That would be more than fair. Totally. And also then it was like, did did you know, like four years ago, Kim went on Watch What Happens Live with uh, Andy Cohen. You may may not know him, Charlie. Um, <laughs> I think and, I know of him <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and on that show, they always have, they play these games and it was like something about like, is squash it- Squash the beef. Squash the beef or whatever. Oh, yeah. And Andy asked Kim about the feud with Taylor. And he's like, hey, are we, is it still going on? Have you guys squashed it? Have you talked to Taylor? And Kim was like, we're over it. We're, it's over. It's, you know, yeah. moving on. And could you imagine <laughs> the person who- Recorded you you without your knowledge, edited a video, and then made you look like a liar and a deceitful, dishonest person around people you care about or fans of yours and family and friends, and then took it upon themselves after not apologizing to you either publicly or privately, Mm -hmm. and then publicly going out and making a statement on your behalf to say that, no, 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 everything's fine between us. We've squashed, we've squashed it, we've moved on. Like, imagine how that would feel. Yeah, probably not great. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like, pissed. I mean, I, yeah, I feel like with that situation too, though, I definitely think maybe Kim was trying to protect Kanye the best she could. That's what I would say. Yeah, yeah. I think there's and definitely. And it's like that's yeah. where there's just so many layers to it. But you're not. But not, I don't think not... everyone has to be best friends again. But I do. I feel like maybe Kim has always been like in a sense. Well, you see in her other interviews, she does disregard things a lot. And doesn't like to talk about them. So maybe that's just like a deflection of hers. I think they're supporting your husband. And then there's using your massive platform to post Try a to lie. Try to assassinate yeah. the like character of some... Yeah. So she could have been like, a sit I down stand tall. by <laughs> yeah, like an Oprah, reunion. Like an Oprah yeah, mediation. Yeah, like an Oprah. Like if Taylor's... Yeah, a two should... on one. <laughs> Were you silent? Or are you silent? <laughs> yeah, they should talk. Yeah. Yeah, but it's... Maybe it's, that's an idea. It's there my you guys go. <laughs> understanding that, yeah they're not cool. T- Kim and Taylor are not cool. And rightfully so from, yeah. from Taylor's camp. And if, if Kim, if someone did that to me and then tried to downplay it publicly and act like it's over with and had never even acknowledged it, I would be fucking furious. It would, would definitely add to the fire. Yeah. Oh my God. Totally. Yeah. I don't well, think it especially would help. Now that like Kim and Kanye aren't together and this is not to say that it was all like Kanye's fault. Like, I don't know what the involvement between both of them was like, but I feel like it's so fair to be like, Hey, obviously like my life has changed. I'm reflecting back on that. And I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. Like it's very yeah, easy maybe, for Kim to yeah. just say like, Hey, looking back, like, sorry about that. Yeah. Or, no, or, or maybe a little bit more. Hey, listen, like that, that was, was really, really wrong. It's not who I want to be. I was. There's no excuse for what I did, but even though maybe I was trying to be a good wife, but nevertheless, I it, it was at the expense and the cost of someone, and that's not okay. And I'm really sorry, and I I hope that that person can forgive me. Like she hasn't done that, and that's kind of icky. And I'm, you know, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, Kim. You know. So now Nick takes back everything he <laughs> ever said about Kim and Taylor are good. Well, I I just wondered if maybe. They were, but now that I have done more research on it, I, I, a, I <laughs> now wouldn't that I've be. done my research. Well, that, that, that watch what happened lives clip is, was anno- Maybe so there's annoying. some like legal things going on where that's why Kim won't like me. Cause isn't it no. illegal to record someone's conversation? Well, oh. So I'm saying her yes. openly having to admit that maybe there'll be like more problems to come out of that. So I don't know. That's yeah. just another theory. She could, maybe she could uh, like cause legal issues so her saying like admitting that she recorded that conversation could lead into other things yeah maybe but I'm she just hasn't trying even, to be she <laughs> hasn't even apologized to, privately i haven't even thought about this situation in years so i'm trying to like well it's re- yeah but it's it's all kind of coming, coming back. back yeah um, damn it's just hard because it's like i feel like the pr wisdom is so different than like the interpersonal integrity of like pr wisdom is like don't address it don't address yeah. it don't address it but like on an interpersonal level it's like do the right thing but she has addressed it and she's said it's over with and it's squashed all right. while that while all while taylor was still like living abroad because like she suffering. felt unsafe and like didn't feel like it was you know she said that she, she lived moved in a foreign country. I didn't know that was. I finally I watched she Miss Americana on the plane because it was on Netflix and I downloaded it. And I, I think without like specifically pinpointing that as the only reason, like she does talk about like being canceled kind of like 
and how I don't know, just how it really like shook her and like shook her to her core, how she clearly grew from it. And she talks a lot about like her value system and how that changed and how she used to just value other people's praise or like making them happy and how she kind of had to like disconnect herself with that because when everyone turned on her, it was really bad. But it, I think it was a really traumatic experience for her as someone who tried. Did everyone so turn on her? Uh, yeah, they were like ever, commenting like, snake emojis on all of her. Of, uh, a like, lot of people. Like, or I'm saying like friend wise. Like, did she lose I don't know if like, she lost friends any close or she friends. just said like the mass media of support? But she literally thought like her career might be over. Got it. You and people know? were being so mean. The internet's yeah. not a nice place. No. no. It's not nice. Now, no. we don't condone any response because people have been going to Kim's page and like posting snake stuff, which like, that's not okay. You can stand up for Taylor without internet bullying. Don't go to people's pages and, and internet bully them. Yeah. Just go to their page and unfollow them. Yeah. If you don't want to follow their content, but their page is like a version, you know, it's like, it's like showing up at their doorstep and like talking shit to them. You don't have to do that, but it is really quite interesting. And you know, I honestly feel like Kim never will. Cause I just don't think Kim and, and Taylor are even on the same level. They just have completely different personalities. It's like Kim is the bizarro Taylor. Like Kim, what you know what she's so good at? Marketing, right? She's mm -hmm. a marketing queen. And to the extent that like, as they always say, you know, there's no such thing as bad press type of thing. And I think Kim on a lot of levels knows how to embrace that kind of mindset. She knows how to roll with it. She knows how to just kind of take whatever intention comes her way and turn it into something that can elevate her career. Or Taylor has different standards in terms of what she's willing to do for attention. And she's not willing to do just about anything. I mean, she turned down an appearance at the royal wedding because it just like wasn't for her. She turned down an opportunity to play at the halftime show of the Super Bowl. Like she's very selective in terms of where she puts herself out there, unlike Kim, who's kind of willing to take any attention that comes her way. And I feel like Kim probably just doesn't understand which is kind of sad. Like she, it's harder for her to empathize what's going on in Taylor's world because I think Kim's probably dealt with her own type of shit and she's just been able to like overcome it where Taylor operates at a whole different level and, you know, she gets attention from the music she makes and the product she puts out where Kim, it's a little different, you know? Totally. I don't know. Oh, okay. So speaking- Apologize, Kim. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's, it's so wonderful when people can admit they were wrong. It's an amazing quality. Yeah. You know what really chaps my you know what? All the crappy grocery store bags where the handles always break, you know, because I'm a paper guy because, you know, recycle. But the problem is, is like, you know, your groceries, they get heavy. Those handles break. You know what I'm talking about if you've ever been to the grocery store. Well, nothing is heavier than a bottle of wine. Gosh forbid you need to. Yeah. Game uh, over. Right. Well, stop buying your wine bottles at the grocery store. No one's that strong. No one needs to show off their strength at the grocery store with bottles of wine. You got to check out First Leaf. First Leaf is a wine club that will send you personalized shipments of bottles that are based on your unique palate right to your door. All you have to do is go to First Leaf's website, answer a few questions about the, your likes and dislikes, and their team of experts will select a customized assortment of world-class wines based on off of your preferences. Everyone in the household is a First Leaf customer. We love it. The variety is great. You get such a selection of wines. It's amazing. And the best part is you don't have to lug a bunch of wine bottles from the grocery store into your house. You ever have one? I've had a, I've had a handle break in the, and in, in, in then the- Smash. A smash. Not with First Leaf though. I don't understand red wine. Like I don't know the difference between literally any of the flavors. I know, like I know, I know the words Shiraz, Merlot, etc. But red wine has just always been so inaccessible to me. I really appreciated First Leaf because I was like, okay, I'm gonna get some white wines. I know I love Sauvignon Blanc. I'm gonna get some of those, some ones that are similar. But then it was a really good way to try some red wines because, like, if I'm in the grocery store, I'm wandering. First Leaf was a really good, safe way of kind of getting these like customized recommendations that made red wine a little bit more accessible. Well, find the wine that you'll love this holiday season with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash V-I-A-L-L -L to sign up and you'll get your first six hand curated bottles for just $44.95. That's tryfirstleaf.com slash V-I-A-L-L T-R-Y-F-R-I-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's tryfirstleaf.com slash V-I-A-L-L. One skin, you're not getting any younger, and either is your skin. But thank God there's one skin out there. It's a revolutionary new product that is helping you not only look younger, but revert, well, reverse aging. Literally reverse aging. It's truly incredible. 
I was so impressed with One Skin hearing about how the whole premise is based in science. Uh, they discovered the they have a cutting edge R&D platform. They were able to measure the efficacy of age reversal molecules in their lab. And by staining skin samples in the lab for sentient cells and analyzing changes to the skin's genetic data before and after exposure to the OS1 peptide, one skin scientist found the OS1 peptide reverses skin's biological age by reducing the number of sentient <laughs> cells by up to 50%. Well, look no further than my beautiful, young looking face. People are shocked. And I would say, appalled when I tell them I, uh, how old you are. <laughs> I went to the grocery store. Did I tell the story already? I went to the grocery store and I forgot my ID and I was buying Natalie non-alcoholic wine because lately, you know, she wants to like enjoy. Well, you still have to get carded. To buy non-alcoholic wine. Which was annoying and I didn't have one. And I was like, I'm 43. And the guy looked at me like I was, I it was like, well, now I know you're lying. <laughs> Anyways, thanks to OneSkin, you're not going to get any younger unless you... Use OneSkin. OneSkin is the world's first skin longevity company. OneSkin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin feels and appears younger. It's time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. New customers get 15% off with code V-I-A-L-L at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with code V-I-A-L-L. The new year is approaching. Now is the best time to invest in your skin. Age healthily with one skin. Speaking of people who were wrong. So <laughs> Kylie posted on her story. It's Reddit is down, by the way, which is very Thank bizarre. God. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. <Thank God. laughs> Let's um, keep it that I hope way. it burns in hell. Because it was on Reddit where people, so Kylie and Avon had done a shared post. These look like, you know, professional photographs. Uh, Avon, as the caption was like, if you believe in something, it's worth fighting for. Don't give up on what really matters. And the only thing oh. that matters is you, Whiteheart. And then that gets deleted very quickly. And then Kylie puts on her story. Following our relationship announcement yesterday, I want to thank God he did not allow me to live another day in the dark. In the last 24 hours, I have been See? grasping with the fact that one of the most important relationships in my life has dissolved due to multiple infidelities. <gasps> this is not just a show, but my real life. And for the foreseeable future, I will be in a time of healing and trying to put the puzzle pieces of my life back together. Please respect my privacy at this time. Love you all, Kylie. That is so sad. Do you, I mean, no. some girls must have, must have reached out, right? Well, if it's multiple infidelities. Yeah. Well, also, my thing is, why did they Multiple wait? same person and multiple different people. Yeah, well, that's why we need the to me, of details. Multiple infidelities feels like multiple, multiple people. different people. Multiple different people, yeah. Also, who are these girls? They, aren't they watching this show and Club knowing rats. that they are like in these relationships, right? Well, so, like, but they might have thought it was just a show, and then like once it, they posted that joint photo, it was like, oh no, wait, they're actually together. Wait, because I've been, you know, I okay, see, there we go. You, you know, know, the like, whole like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, Avon out there clubbing it up, drinking it, up, you know, and it's like, aren't you with like Kylie? He, and he could have been just like, you know, it's, it's just like a show, show yeah. just like whatever, and. Because it, the fact, That's the timing really, of it all. But yeah. Because it came out right after their relationship, quote unquote, went public. And if you had hooked up with Avon between now and then and said, wait. Because they're filming Bachelor in Paradise in the summer, right? Yeah. Like in July. Also, Sylita is so hot and so humid. And those girls getting their hair and makeup done every day is so amazing to me. <laughs> but so it films in the summer and then gets shown in the fall. But it's really not that many months Three Park. weeks. Oh, no, it's not that many months. Yeah, so that's they, they wrap like, in June, I think, May or June. So that's like a long time living together and doing things, right? And the show's being aired. Don't I mean, you? It's been six months since. It's a decent amount of time. Yeah, yeah. they finished. I just get filming. confused when people are like cheating like this. Yeah. Or like, like, I just, maybe my thing is like, where is the time and who's doing this with you? And how are you believing that they're not, like, that's just for the show? I don't know. I just get confused. Avon then responded. He responded, after careful thought and consideration into writing this, I want to first and foremost apologize to Kylie, my family, and my friends for my actions. I've made major mistakes in the relationship and hurt someone who was very close to me. At this time, I'm in an extremely, extremely low place trying to work on myself. I'm doing my best to find healing, find myself, and be a better person. Please have grace and respect for Kylie and her family through this difficult time. Thank you. I think to answer your That's question, Charlie, 
It's a little dramatic. Having been on, you've, you've been on reality TV. Yeah. And I think, I think we sometimes, people like you and I who have experience behind reality TV, forget just how much people just really have no idea how the sausage is made, so to speak, when it comes to TV. And I think there's a lot of like, I'll, you know, I'll believe whatever you tell me. Is yeah. it real? Is it all fake? I think a lot of people just think it's all fake or want to believe that. So if someone on the show says something, like you're not going to... I guess you're not going to double art. down on what they are like, saying. Okay, I guess it's fake, True. whatever, you know. Um, where you understand that like on Vanderpump, like, yeah, no, these are these people's lives and they're willing to show it on TV and it's not as quote unquote fake as some people want to believe it is. And I just thought maybe like Bachelor... In paradise, I, maybe this is me being naive because it's like the first season I really watched. I was, I really thought they were like all searching for love. <laughs> I'm like, am I being like naive or like, do people really go on? I'm like, that's kind of just to me a waste of like time and energy. I think to go of- date these people for like, you know, three, four or five weeks, however long they do it and go fly out and do this like show. I just feel like that's such a waste of time and energy. I would just go do something else. I think nowadays it's maybe like half an hour. Like Kylie seemed like she That's what I'm saying. really came down and really wanted to be with Ava. And she the, said that in the beginning. That she the wanted to be with So that's where I get confused is I'm like, I thought you guys were really in love with each other and you don't do this to someone you love. Well, I you know, like, it's like icky. I feel like that's a perfect segue into like the finale because from the second Kylie came in, she was like, even I could see us getting engaged. Like yeah. she has had, I think, her mind on engagement for the whole show. Mm-hmm. And so it was very interesting to watch her and Avon's back and forth on the finale. What did you make of both of them and where they were coming from? Did you feel like one of them had a little bit more validity? Clearly just not two people just completely on two different pages. Yeah. I don't think at the time, like Avon was wrong for not wanting to get engaged for dating someone for three weeks. I It also... But at the same time, we don't know if it was just three weeks or had how much they had been talking before. Either way, like it's understandable that Avon wouldn't want to get engaged after a brief dating period, even if it did happen a little bit before Paradise. At the same time, like I get where Kylie's coming from. She's like, this is the world we signed up for. And you know this world because this is your second stint doing it, you know? And it would make sense for her to have different expectations of Avon than she would say a guy outside of the bachelor bubble so i don't think either of them were wrong it just clearly they just weren't communicating you know it just seems weird that they got to that point and seem to not have conversations like that i feel like him and tyler kind of had the same energy towards the end of the relationships where it was like you were all in and then all of a sudden it was like oh no I'm like, not that serious. And you're like, wait, what? Like, what do you mean you're not that serious? What, were we, what was everyone doing this whole time? I felt really bad for Mercedes. I feel like she was like seeing like Kylie where she was like, wait, I thought like you liked me. And they're like, mm. yeah, like not that much. And you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Not enough to get engaged. Yeah. What sucks? And also like, I don't know, the, the setup's there. The ring is there. Like you didn't have to pay all that money. <laughs> you actually, if anything, use the situation. Yeah. And we're going to be a user of anything used like Bachelor in Paradise's budget. What sucks yeah. for Mercedes is even worse is because, you know, they didn't show us a lot of their relationship. So from a viewer standpoint, it almost gives Tyler the benefit of the doubt being like, why is she so upset? We didn't really, you know, they didn't have much of a relationship, but we have no idea. Like they probably could have been hanging out every hanging day, out every day talking, all day, talking about the future. Making but the show, out on day beds. <laughs> yeah, but the show didn't really focus on it because there wasn't a lot of drama behind it. And they had, you know, Kat doing her thing and the other relationships seemed more advanced. So that's all the airtime they got, not really validating Mercedes' frustrations. But in reality, probably totally justified to Charlie's point. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of felt like all the boys on this season kind of dropped the ball a little bit. They were all just kind of like whiny and crying and just like, like none of them were just stepping up to the plate besides like Aaron B that, or what, 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 wait, what was that guy's name that brought the girl the poop platter? Aaron S. Aaron S. Just like that Aaron's. was so sweet. But if like everyone else was just like, want, 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 like the boys were just there to hang out. And I'm like, guys, we need a little bit more here. You know, let me see some better dates. That's been like, kind of typical for Bachelor in Paradise for a while where it's definitely like a a boys summer camp it feels like yeah that's exactly how yeah it felt. and like the women want to come down and be like hey can i find love here can we get engaged yeah um and the boys are like cool 
Like, oh. We can hang out. Yeah. For a couple weeks. Maybe I'll see you around, dude. Like, and then there's Kat. Don't and, talk to me too much, though. <laughs> Kat and John Henry, I would say congratulations on your engagement, but they haven't posted anything. Yeah. Since the finale. Well, he has like a really hard job. He's like underwater, so you know? Welding. Is he you, you, you you can't take any photos because he's just been yeah. like underwater. He's, underwater. he's been underwater right now. He's been underwater since last Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like busy floating. And he's he like, doesn't babe, have time to he's post like, babe, an We got to collaborate. I want to make sure we post at the same time <laughs> so you would just hold it. off and pretend yeah. that we're not happy about our engagement until I come up. From, from C. C. Yeah. It is interesting that they haven't posted. Also, I could see like maybe Kat wanting it to be like a certain way. Maybe she I wants like a photo see. shoot and like, he hasn't I, been up from the water yet. <laughs> so they need like a perfect day. I, I could see her wanting it a And she's way. like a nurse. So she might be busy too. Like it's, Yeah. Maybe she's doing like a 36 hour shift or something. Yeah. And like they need to plan the day. Yeah. It's just interesting that they didn't even post like a screenshot from the proposal day or like something. From I feel like she show. probably didn't like it. The pit. I can no, see she, her not liking the photos. That's I, a good point. I can literally see a cat being like, because I'm a little bit like that. Like, I get some of the cat's crazy moments. I was like, <laughs> there hasn't been. I kind of relate. <laughs> a time in the past six months where they had a cute meetup where they've taken a cute selfie. He's underwater. Talk, he's underwater. <laughs> and she's working really hard. They, they both, both have hard jobs. They both posted Instagram stories re- referring to like giving love to like what seemed to be a producer that. Yeah. They, so they're on social media, including John Henry, unless unless someone is managing. Yeah, his someone's account. probably doing it for them. Yeah, and he wants to be a part of his engagement announcement. I feel like <laughs> at this point, John Henry definitely has a waterproof phone case. <laughs> <laughs> right? I feel like, like it's twenty twenty three. He has the OtterBox. No, he doesn't. It. He's just too cool. He doesn't even bring it down. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to be distracted. Yeah, he's like, I'm too focused. Yeah. I was curious in Kylie and Avon when they were having this back and forth about the proposal, whether or not it was going to happen. Kylie brought up Avon and Rachel's relationship and said, well, like you were in a headspace to get engaged when you were dating Rachel. Why Ooh. is it different? What did you make of that? I, I think it's kind of I get why she said that, you know. Because he's basically, again, we don't, we didn't even get to see the whole conversation. You know, I'm sure they edited a lot out. And he was, I'm guessing, referring to like, hey, maybe I'm just not there yet. It's only been a f- couple of weeks. Avon was thinking pragmatically. He was thinking about the real world and every, you know, which makes total sense. But Kylie's is like, sure, but in this world, you have, you have dove into the process. You have immersed yourself like I have for you. So I can I can see why she is comparing the two. Again, I don't know if it doesn't make her or him wrong or right. I get where she's coming from. I get her logic and I get her frustrations because it's like, you've done this before. I know you're capable of going there because you went there with Rachel. So why can't you go there with me? I, I, I get where she's connecting the dots. And she kind of said this where she was like, I feel embarrassed and it seemed like insecurity. And also just from the way she was reacting, it seems like she hasn't run into a roadblock block like this in a relationship where like it seems like usually if she's wanted to escalate things people have been very down for it I felt like this was one area where for me I don't think I really understood apart from like I get the Neil Lane thing is kind of nice but I don't know I was kind of like this engagement it feels it feels like you just want the title more than you want the advancement in the relationship but then I was like I also didn't really grow up in a place where there was a ton of pressure to get married in like maybe earlier mid-20s is that something that like either of you empathize with a little bit more or could see as like why that would be important to someone? Because for me, it just felt a little bit like being more focused on like a superficial thing than like a relationship based milestone. Mm, I mean, I think definitely in the South, that's like a big thing to, you know, get married and have kids kind of ASAP. Uh, I thankfully did not have a family that pressured any of that onto me. But um, I mean, I think it's I think that's a fair question for Kylie to ask Avon. You know, I feel like they've definitely spent so much more time together than he ever spent with Rachel. And maybe it was just his first go around in the show. And he was like, oh, this is what you're supposed to do. So I'm just going to do it. I don't know. And now maybe he has a little bit more knowledge. And so he's like, no, I know we don't have to get engaged and we can just date off the show. But think about it, right? If you're Kylie and... She is clearly into Avon at this point. She wants to be with him. She sees a future with him. And even if Kylie is thinking, yeah, sure, 
we have a lot to learn about each other. I don't, I can't predict the future, but like every other engagement that's ever happened on The Bachelor, Bachelorette, or Paradise is not because two people are 100% certain like they can predict the future. They're just like, hey, listen, I have these in intense feelings for you right now. And fuck it, like, why not? Because Kylie's thinking, well, if we do end up working out, I don't want us to go back and remember the time where I had to beg for an engagement and we kind of like reluctantly left the beach together. Yeah. I want to memorialize our relationship on this television show because like, how cool would it be to go back and be able to watch that? Like, it makes t a ton of sense for Kylie to, she is trusting her feelings for Avon saying, you know, listen, I don't know, I can't predict the future, but like, I want this for our relationship because what a cool way to kick it off. Like, look at Joe and Serena, Tanner and Jade, all the other couples that they flash. Well, that's at why the you're end. going to the beach. Yeah. And now, <laughs> like, that's just like the end of it all. Like, you're going to the beach to get engaged. Is that not the that's, premise of the show? It is the premise of the show. I mean, okay. it's been that's you know, what you're evolving. supposed to do. And so and all those couples that are now married have kids, some of some of which have kids. They can like, look back on look it. Look back and yeah. every season it's like they're celebrated for the relationship that's worked out. And Kylie has seen this and she knows it. And that's probably what she wants. Right. So it makes total sense. Even if she can be like, yeah, listen, I don't know. I could leave the beach and you could cheat on me, you know. Right. But like right now, I want to take this risk because of how I feel about you. I feel like she's also always going to compare herself to Rachel now. Well, it also felt or like ask her why, like or why he wasn't so into her as much as she was into him or like vice versa. I feel like she's always going to compare. It seems like there was a lot of comparison going yeah. on, both with maybe Kylie looking at Eliza and Aaron's relationship and feeling like really yearning for that kind of level of commitment. And then also when Sam and Peter, who like I feel like got no airtime, kind of had forgotten about them at certain points in the episode, when they were having their conversation, Peter was like, I want to give it a shot. And then Sam was like, yeah, we just like we haven't gotten as far as other couples. So like, I don't think we will ever get there. Like, mm -hmm. it seems like it was a very comparison based breakup as opposed to a like just tunnel vision of like our own relationship kind of thing. Yeah, I think that was for Kylie. Back to Kylie. I think it was just her being vulnerable, you know, yeah. like to say, I want to do this. Like, she's not delusional. She's just willing to take the risk and be vulnerable. And Avon wasn't. And now we know why because he was like i got some ladies back at home i got a call damn I that done. sucks Ooh. yikes yeah how many Ooh. do you think it was like what's the number <gasps> i hope it wasn't more than one god she said multiple infidelities yeah yeah well maybe it was like one person i was hope it was doesn't multiple mean three and couple is like two isn't there like a <laughs> after that's a right. yeah. i feel like it but to be honest, so Kylie, can we talk honestly, about your usage of the word? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do yeah. think again, we need details, people. You have to drop all the details of everything, please. Even if it were to, I feel like she has every right to like make it seem like it was even more because she's pissed and she has every yeah, right she to, to like write his name and blood. Upset. A bunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a whole <laughs> lot of infidelities. Yeah. She's key in his car. Also, like she dug her name into it's, the side exactly. of this pretty little souped up four wheel drive. <laughs> Poor girl, that sucks. Yeah. Oof. We did also, um, at the end of Paradise, get a little look into Joey's season. Charlie, are you invested in Joey's love story? I am kind of not, but I might. Because of him? or the I just season? thought he was like a little, I mean, I don't know. He's considered by many to be like the first more heart throbby basher we've had in a few I agree. Times. I agree. He's okay, agree. maybe I need to look harder. He's definitely prettier than the past few i like maybe because actually i lied i'll probably watch i like to watch the girls more than the group of guys Obviously, to be honest yeah. totally so i also think there's this element of joey where it's like it kind of like he it just seems too nice he seems and like that's why i don't want him to like i don't know go through this experience and get jaded i'm like stay nice joey but it's nice to have a like a bachelor that people agree is nice yeah and, like in a way that's like compelling because it felt like with like zach and clayton people were like okay yeah i didn't <laughs> you know? like zach season but my friend was on it so i felt like i had who to... was your friend she didn't make it far i watch anytime like i have one friend that even gets like to the first but kim her name was kimmy that's how i always got into them how like, many friends have you had on I've had, a, like, actually, I've had probably had, like, last, every season last year, I probably had a girl on a season. Last four or five years. Or multiple yeah. girls. How yeah. You, is it just a coincidence? Do you know people? Like, what? what well, I feel like every girl in L.A., like, I have a lot of friends. So, like, once, one of them is always on the back. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they usually don't make it that far. I've had, a, I will say I've had a one that's made it far. 
You Who's haven't that? had one. No, I haven't that, had haven't. one. No. But once you start watching, I'm like, well, now I'm got to know mm-hmm. how this finishes. Did you know Genevieve? She was from L.A. Before. No, but I think we have season? mutual friends. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. And then I just met Charity the other day. OK. She was very nice. Yeah. All the Bachelor girls are very nice. and pretty, So it's not a bad TV show to watch. We just uh, hopefully will will Joy bring the ratings up? Yeah. They've... Have they released the girls yet? No. No, oh. just they his... showed the clip. But we'll see what it airs like end of January or something. I wanted to like take a break because the whole Golden Bachelor thing with how that fell out with them. I was like heartbroken. Uh, that yeah, Gary, I was like getting frustrated that Gary ended up being just another guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Just another dude. Oh, yeah. I just like to live in false reality that we can have well, one it, normal. Person. It's just it's kind of fascinating that like how it's so many bachelors get turned on by the end of the season. They do. huh? And Gary was no exception. Yeah. But how much of that is like just the way they're framing it? Like, it feels like they could have controlled. They could have protected Gary a lot more. And granted, part of it is like they want to capture the reality of the show and like the real drama. But I think part of it is like what you said so much that I really agreed with Nick was like, we haven't been invested in their love story. It's just been Teresa like fawning and him kind of being like, thanks for saying that. What was that? But then the news that came out too. And it's just, I don't know, when you get to the end and you have the opportunity to have three fantasy suites and meet people's families and you start saying, I love you to multiple people, (laughs) it gets a little grimy and a little like sleazy. Sleazy. He did, huh? He was on his like bachelor. They all do that that, though. They all get shit for it too. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Quince. I am happy Quince exists. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The bathing suit I got from there is one of the best items I have in my closet. I'm annoyed that it's winter and I can't whip it out more. What I like so much about this is that it's very tastefully designed. Like it is truly like it has these like cute little ruffles on the straps, but it's still very like simple and elegant. And the quality is so high with all of Quince's products, whether it's their $59 Mongolian cashmere, whether it's they have washable silk on their website, they have all of these amazing luxury products that they've taken. They've made it at an accessible price and they've made the care and maintenance usable. So that way you can truly upgrade your wardrobe with these like classy neutrals, these beautiful statement pieces. And it is so much cheaper than any other option that has this quality of good. Quince has all the cold weather must-haves like 100% Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweaters from $59, suede bomber jackets and organic cotton sweaters, and so much more. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. Like Amanda said, the selection is amazing. If you're looking to mix up your closet and get some fantastic pieces, that you thought you could never afford. Well, now you can with Quince. Make gift giving better this year with Quince. Go to quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L for free shipping and 365 day returns on your order. That's quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L. This episode is brought to you by IQ Bar. I'm devastated. I just ate the last IQ bar in my car, and now I don't feel safe anymore. We'll probably get you some more, Amanda. I need more because I cannot tell you the peace of mind for knowing that no matter where the day takes me, like I have a snack that is going to fuel me up and keep me from getting hangry. It's like in the video games where you had like a free life, you know? Exactly. It (laughs) so is. It truly recharges you. I feel like I, before I found IQ Bar, I've genuinely tried so many different health bars. And I feel like there's always at least one trade off, whether it's that it tastes like you're making cement in your mouth, whether it's that there's a ton of like sugar or not a ton of protein, the kind of like whatever nutritional value you're looking to get out of it isn't quite there. And IQ bar is the first bar that I found that has that good balance of like, it has the ingredients that I want. It has the fuel that I want. And I genuinely enjoy the taste of it. My favorite is the coconut chip. Discover the brain and body boosting benefits of IQ bar with the ultimate sampler pack. It's seven IQ bars, four IQ mix sticks and four IQ Joe sticks. And today our listeners get an exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping. This text files, that's F-I-L-E-S to 64,000. This sampler pack is an amazing way to try all the various IQ bar products and flavors. I really liked the IQ Joe sticks. I was so surprised. Like I wouldn't have thought that I would love the vanilla flavor so much, but I was really into it. They have 200 milligrams of caffeine. The IQ mix sticks are the perfect, like you're at work. It's 2.30. You want to go home. You need a little drink to pick you up. You make an IQ mix stick. It's awesome. 
Shocking how the combination of taste and quality, like you never would have thought something this good would be this good for you. Refuel smarter with IQ Bar's Ultimate Sampler Pack. That's seven IQ Bars, four IQ Mix Sticks, and four IQ Joe Sticks. And now our special podcast listeners get 20% off all IQ Bar products, plus get free shipping. To get your 20% off, just text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. Get your discount text FILES to 64000. That's FILES to 64000. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. We have to talk about uh, this Matt Reef. Is it Reef or Rife? Rife. I'm Rife. pretty sure it's Matt. Drama. Oh, is hey, that the comedian guy? Yeah. So the rise and fall of Matt Rife. So is this like about what he said or like the rumors about his plastic surgery? Like no, what no, are we talking actually, about? No, he's in some sort of the internet All feud. The he's in an internet feud with like a TikTok mom. Wait, what? And a six-year-old. Wait, why? <laughs> no, he went after a six-year-old. What? What did so, he say? He has a tell me everything in his comedy. Yeah, stand up, if that's what you want to call it. It's not very funny. Did you guys um, watch it? I I haven't seen it. I've heard plenty about it. I've heard lots of. I've seen lots of clips. But he basically he has some joke about s- Jupiter and like s- space. Okay. He also and whatever like, opened up with like a domestic violence joke. Yes, I feel like I felt like that was known. But yes, he did open up his stand up with domestic violence joke, which someone who's has been in domestic violence is not funny. Also, just um, to point out, he has an audience of his his audience is women. I was which is say, like is it all his audience women? Like, yeah. it's not ever OK to make a joke like that, but it's even weirder to like go like after, the hand that feeds you. Yeah, it's like yeah. I would love more men to listen to this show because we have an audience of women, but I'm not going to start like shitting on women <laughs> just for this to get a couple dudes to tune in. Right, because it was he had all flavors of shitting on women on his special because it was like obviously like the domestic right. violence being like the grossest and I think like the most like serious, but then he also goes on to like make fun of crystal girlies and astrology girlies, which is like, yeah, it's like you can have that take if you want to, but first of all, it's not a very new one. It's not that funny. And second of all, like your audience is mostly women and you're being disparaging to this interest that is like yeah. predominantly women. All right, babe, so please. Yes. So he has a joke okay. about space, says something about Jupiter, you know, whatever he said was incorrect. Oh, just the like space joke. about the space. OK. Jupiter having rings or yes. something. So Got he's it. talking about he's making fun of the astrology girlies and about how like they're upset about not getting married. And he's like, it has nothing to do with the stars, man. Just because Jupiter has a ring and you don't doesn't mean you're supposed to look up to magical advice. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, so um, this woman on like, that's not funny. Uh, This woman. uh, No, I know. I'm saying his (laughs) joke isn't funny. This woman on TikTok who has like 2.2 million followers. Name is Bunny Hadea. Okay. She um, has a son and she's like shown her son on social media. It's definitely not like about him, but the world knows his name. They know that he's obsessed with space. He like, Oh, so he like loves space. Yes. Okay. Got it. So she duetted or stitched his little clip of his comedy special in the, little boy responded being like yeah and it's it's stitched to not her the first thing that comes up is the little boy mm-hmm. with the camp like a selfie style got it and he's six six year old so like the video finishes of him and then the keith's responding correct yes. okay and he so says it's like the boy is making a stitch not got her. it not the mom the, the little kid <laughs> yeah six year on on the mom's account okay and the little boy says jupiter doesn't have a ring it's saturn does and you're mean to girls okay so he's just being silly a little sure. boy yeah. sure and Matt Reif comments on the video. He comments. What does he comment? Oh, it's horrific. What? Could you read it verbatim, Amanda? This is stressing me out. Okay. So why is it? <laughs> Jupiter also has a ring. Oh, dot, dot, dot. And Santa isn't real. And then your mom <laughs> buys your presents with the money she makes on OnlyFans. Good luck. Okay. Disgusting. Well, why are she- you saying OnlyFans to a six-year-old? Yeah, I don't think that we need to say that. Saying that Santa is not real is kind of rough. That's really, That's he, obviously, totally the mom could like not show him, right? So I have a tip. Yeah. I'm curious what you think. Okay. I, I just want to preface this by being like what Matt Reef did was gross right. and raw, re- whatever the fuck his name is. That was gross. His comment, yeah. disgusting. He so, is 100% so not wrong for his comment. Yeah. And, not but, but and. I think what the mom is doing, is exploiting her son is disgusting. This 
I have a he, second take on that. He's too, fucking yeah. six years old. So like he doesn't know who Matt Reef is. He doesn't he I, I'm assuming he didn't watch his comedy special. And so clearly the mom used her son as a prop to be like, here, this would be cute. Say this in the comment about and you hate girls or you're mean to girls or whatever. And she she put Are you saying that she provoked the situation by putting him in? Well, she kind of she ex not kind of she literally yeah. exploited her son by saying, hey, I'm going to use my six year old to pick a fight with a comedian. Yeah, probably not the best. Like, what did you think was <laughs> yeah. going to happen and again? What that does not in any way excuse what what Matt did. But I just think it's shameless to use your six year old in some sort of Internet drama. Clearly, she fed him the line. She put him out there. And if you don't want your son to see Matt's comment, just make sure he's not on the Internet. He's six years old. I'm assuming she lets him go on when she wants him to go on and not like she saw the comment. Um, the six year old did it. And I hope that she didn't say, do you know what Matt Riff said about you to the six year old? Yeah, I'm assuming that didn't happen. No, I just think it's kind of gross that she because is all using... the adults are to blame. <laughs> yes. It's just it's gross that she is exploiting her son for clout. Are you guys going to have limits with your like, babe? Of like... course we are. And I don't know what those rules are that we're going to have. We've talked yeah. about it. And like, you know, we've you know, showing our daughter's baby pictures when she's like three months old, probably not a big deal showing her face. But as she grows up, I don't know. We haven't really figured it out mm -hmm. yet. Because it's like a really tough area to like, you're like, do you want your kids to have fun? You want them to like, obviously the internet is the new world. So it's almost like they kind of have to be in the know, you know, but then you also want to protect them from everything well, yeah, or I, protect them from telling them that Santa's not real. I mean, like on this show, we, gnarly. we commentate on public <laughs> figures. He, he just like went so low. He's like, you know what? Fuck this kid. I like that it's the <laughs> yeah. Santa. That's really getting you not the OnlyFans comment. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that too. That, well, that was weird. I, well, he doesn't even know what OnlyFans. Does, only she, fan. If, if, does if, she do OnlyFans? I don't no, know about this know. bunny girl. Not to my knowledge. I, I don't know. So I, it's I, also I, like, why are we The Santa thing is way worse. He doesn't know what OnlyFans is. He knows what Santa is. And if the kid did read it, I would say the Santa comment is way worse than the only fans yeah a, i mean but it's still as just you know it's like it's, it's not gross. good yeah it's gross but she is also wrong because now if he does see it now he's gonna be like sad about santa claus and also like what's only fans and like yeah it's now he's curious about what only fans her is. mom mm -hmm. is partly his is partly to blame i'm i just i feel strongly about that because she exploited her son and thought it was what he, does she do on social media like what is know. her like basis or she just like but, it's like a family account like no it's like or is it just about her like what does she about do her. she's she's uh, extremely rich it's kind of just like about her like lifestyle of like Got it. her jets and her, her but if you're gonna but, talk shit like don't use your son to talk shit i mean yeah. like it would we commentate on public figures reality tv stars on the show i couldn't imagine when when our, six years from now, when our daughter's six, and we, you know, if I want to have some commentary on a comedian to bring her on the show, like, here, respond. And then here, say this and feed her a line. Well, especially a and comedian. Then, and then be outraged when that very comedian yeah. decided to like respond to me using my kid. What Matt did is disgusting and wrong. I, and I think she deserves also a lot of criticism for exposing her son. Yeah, maybe no like kid stuff on the internet. Like there should just be rules. Yeah. I, I feel like, I mean, sh yeah, sh her videoing her son and putting it out there, feeding him those lines is definitely wrong. I think Matt deciding to, because he doesn't respond to every hater. No. But he chose oh, so to respond to like a six-year-old that kid, <laughs> a little boy. You like chose to. Yeah. And like the the redirect on his, apo his apology for domestic abuse and like the redirect to special needs helmets. And it's just all like it's just the rise. We have truly watched in a span of six months the rise and the fall of Matt Reif. Is he like in big? Like, is everyone mad at him now? I mean, I mean, he's definitely alienated his audience. I mean, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not a because his audience was like what seven, like eighty percent women. Or, Probably more. I didn't. Honestly. I don't really know much about him to be honest. It was just like a weird fucking move. I just thought it was the whole. I also just thought maybe he. I know he's older, but in the whole, when I saw it all plan out, I was like maybe he was also wasn't ready to have his own special like he just like felt like that whole i didn't finish his comedy special i just like probably watched the first five minutes of it and got like a little like eh, i'm kind of over this but maybe like maturity wise he isn't ready to work stages like that and jokes like that and doesn't really know his place yet in the comedy world especially since having an audience he doesn't even know how to cater to because i've seen so many comedy shows and it takes a lot and i went to the one 
for that was just filmed for um, Dave Chappelle. And I can't remember who opened for them. And even for them, I was like, okay, these jokes are not really landing anymore. Like, we got to switch this up a little bit. And I think this day and age, maybe what used to be funny isn't funny anymore to everybody. Yeah, I would agree. So well, it's I mean, just that's... like a tougher crowd work to work, you know? I feel like maybe he just wasn't ready for that. And then now is taking it out on six-year-olds in Santa Claus. I don't know. <laughs> like, what? I, I think he's... Maybe just... he needs a different PR team and stay off the internet for a second. Mm. I don't think he has a PR team. I think yeah, he needs to hire just, one. Just himself. <laughs> yeah. He does reference later in the special. He, in his special, brings up, like, making fun of this woman on Twitter for her weight. And then he's like, my PR team, he like has an aside where he's like, yeah, my PR team did not want me to respond or like did not want me to like even start this like mm. Twitter thing in the first place. So it seems like he kind of has a level of ego where he goes against. But isn't that the judgment. hard part in comedy, though? It's like, where does comedy land now? Like where what's funny? What's not funny? Where is like because it's just so hard. I feel like it's like every week a comedian is almost in trouble. And it's like, where are the rules now in comedy? Well, you know, like, how does that work are, out for everybody? There are no rules. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of, I've, I've, with this whole Matt Reeve drama, there's been a lot of discourse about this topic where yeah. it seems like there's a lot of comedians who are actually trying to get into trouble because when it comes to the people who like their jokes, it's not about having critics. It's just about having more people into what you're saying, regardless of what you think about it. And it's so yeah. you know, comedy, like it's, it's an art, it's subjective. So some people can reject the art. Some people can praise the art. I think we're all in agreement of what he said being not funny and grotesque. Mm -hmm. And it's also just bizarre given who his audience is. It was just 100%. like, you know, it's yeah. Like, yeah, but like maybe do a little bit more research, a little bit more practice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Think about what we're doing, but comedy is hard. So I'm like, I don't know. Thank God that I'm not in that position. Putting yourself out there and then, I don't know. You know, um, you should really think about what you're doing. <laughs> another position that you're not in, Vanderpump. Thank I'm you, not. Babe, you read my mind. Like, oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> you're not on the season of Vanderpump yeah. Rules. I am Why not. Why are you not on season 11 of Vanderpump? I, Charlie, really thought after you were here. Yeah. And I still think this. I think you're a star. I oh, think thanks. you have star qualities. Let's I think you're this. funny. I think you have some banger one-liners. You can't help but be honest. It's it's a great reality TV quality. And I thought, okay, we're Rachel, Raquel, she's not going to be on it. They're looking for new characters. I think they're going to really give Charlie a moment. And then you were just like, fuck this, peace out. <laughs> no, not that's not how it went. But why aren't you? Because I really thought if you, <sighs> if I was on the impression that if you wanted it, you could have been... Oh, I mean. Oh, what? No, yeah, say it. How do I say this? Um, maybe I just didn't feel like aligned with me this year. I just couldn't do it. I sat. They got the contracts. I mean, I, we were talking for months. Everything was going good, and and then the day it came to sign on the dotted line, I was like already ready to film that night. I just something told me not to do it. But what was that something? I don't, I literally just, I had something in my stomach. Like I just, I was having a really hard time in negotiations and contracts. And I just didn't know where I kind of fell into place with Vanderpump this year. I just didn't feel like, where was the show going? Where, where is everyone else going? Where did I kind of align with that? I just felt like I was in such different places and a place in my life than everyone else's. And I just didn't feel connected in the same way. And yes, I could have done it. And yes, I could have probably had like my engagement and all these things. And now looking back on it, I'm kind of glad I didn't because my whole life would have probably worked out differently. Who would have known if I would have made it to my engagement? Because it just causes so many problems. And I just looked back at my last four years of my life and realized that it was just all Vanderpump. Yeah. And you really are exposing your life. And it's, to... it's more than that, though, too. It's like, even if I'm not exposing my life, I'm scheduled to this life, right? I'm, I'm on Vanderpump clock. And I lost a lot of friends that were in my real life. And I felt like my family relationship and then getting into the space with my now fiance, it was like, where am I going? What am I doing? And is it here anymore? Is it really here? Like, what am I going to even be talking about with like the certain people? You know, like I didn't even really want to be in a space or in a room with some of them. Like, did you, it's like you didn't feel like having Lala go after your relationship. I on, well, honestly, that, I don't know if no, Lala no, would, no, but I don't think she would. Of, I, no, I, maybe anyone, even really. like, maybe even just being of like icky around like 
people like Tom Sandoval, like, what are you doing? And like, I don't want to be a part of that. Like, not in a mean way, like, just like I, I would run, rather just like maybe go hang out with Katie and get some cocktails and like chill and hang out. But I also don't need to be on Vanderpump to do that. Yeah. So, have you, speaking of Tom, have you ran into Tom recently or seen him or? He, I actually, yeah, I think I, I ran into him at Barney's. He tried to be nice to me and it freaked me out. And I just was, <laughs> I don't know. I just freaked me out. I'm just like, I just leave kind of, I, I don't know. I just. What did he say to you? He was like, hey. And I just was like, hi. I'm with my friends, with people I love. Like, please don't bother me. I just got back from my engagement too. So it was like, I was very nice. Like, I was on a high. So he was like, I even said hi back. But I just, even when I saw him and then I've seen it. I mean, I've seen all the cast members in different parties this year. And I just went to see Ariana at the semi-finale. But there's certain people I see where like, it makes my stomach hurt and I feel really uncomfortable. And then there's there's others that I'm like, I like you, but you don't really get to pick and choose Who when you do shit. So Sandoval makes your stomach hurt. I just think it's like uncomfortable. Yeah. I just, Anyone else? No, I just, no. I just like, you know, I like who I like. No. <laughs> who, who else? No. Have you spoken to Rachel recently? No. No. Not no. since. What, did you, what do you okay. think of her new podcast and about like being the other woman and all that stuff going on? I honestly, so this is what I kind of do. I kind of like take people out and like, throw them out of my mind when I really don't want to talk or like them anymore. So I didn't really read much into it. I think whatever she needs to do for her, everyone else is doing what they need to do for them. But um, I just, it's confusing and it's icky. Like I said, it's just can, like, what are we doing? You know, like, what are we doing, guys? Like, what are, like, come on. Well, I mean, maybe I everyone think, needs to like go back and like. I think what she's doing is still trying to have a career in the public eye, even though yeah. she says she's stepping away and she's trying to do it without needing Vanderpump, I guess. And I feel like that, well, that was my thing too. Like, you don't have to diss Vanderpump, right? Like, you can still look at that part of your life and be like, okay, that happened because it did all do things for us in different ways, even it may have not been the way we wanted it to or. Maybe not everyone's as like, you know, A-list or movie star as they want to, whatever vision they had. But that was still an experience that we were given. And it was still a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I feel like there should still be respect towards it, you know. And that was my thing with them. I was like, there's no bad blood. And just because I'm not on this season doesn't... You never know. Yeah. Like my, you know, there's been a lot of things going on this year that have been great. And it might not align with Vanderpump. It might be next year might do another show, you know, who knows? <laughs> but, but can I just say, I appreciate you saying that. And this, right here, you, you speaking the way you're speaking is kind of what, what I talk about all the time when the whole reality reckoning and other reality TV stars, their, their lack of personal accountability. Yeah. So like, here you are, you've, you've been exposed to the show, you know what it is, you've been on the show, you've dealt with producers, you've dealt with other cast. You also have things going on in your life. You have a very serious relationship. You recently got engaged and you must I clearly have had thoughts about like, is this good for me? Is this good for our relationship? A hundred percent. Long term. And you made a conscious choice despite whatever money or fame yeah. or attention that came with being on Vanderpump, you chose to not go on it because you didn't think the cost was worth the opportunity. And that was a personal choice. You might go back, you might change your mind, but instead of- Yeah, now I have to pay for this wedding. I'm like, actually- I'm just well, That's kidding. what I'm saying. But instead of ignoring the risk, yeah. going on the show and then having it not go the way you want, knowing how the show works, I, you know, I, again, I have- little sympathy for because the show is out the show is outrageous Nally and i will get into it but like salt lake city house real house well, that's salt the lake thing city. though too like none of them and that's the question i had asked myself like you're not going on there for no entertainment there's intention going yeah. on it you know what's my intention going here what is like do i want to exploit my relationship because i knew at that time my, my fiance and i were together for seven years and it was going to turn into why aren't you being engaged yet yeah. why aren't you doing and i and then it who knows what that would have turned out to or how that would have turned out because when you do film these things, things do get lost in translation of what's real and what's not real. Yeah. And I, yeah, like to your point, I just wasn't, wasn't really to risk multiple things. And I do have to protect myself in a sense that like, I like professionalism. I like career. I want to do more things for myself. 
and I didn't want to be pigeon held. Yeah. No, and you made a choice for yourself. And yeah. I, I really respect that because in, oh. you, what you didn't do is just kind of go on, ignore the risk and then blame other people when things didn't go your way. I mean, we're watching Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and the, the most recent episode we watched. Which one? Where uh, Meredith accuses Angie's husband, uh, spreads a rumor that she, he's sleeping with other men. Oh, yeah. I didn't like that. No, it's horrific. That was bad. Yeah. And I... It, it was horrific what Meredith did, but and, and not not a but because it's wrong. But you realize that that's the world, that's, that's the TV show, and if you're going to be on it, you have to wonder if your castmates are going to be that nasty. You have to be down with the get down. You yeah. really do that. It's just what it is. <laughs> like that's what the show is all about. Yeah. So I respect and it's that, entertaining that you decided it wasn't the right time for you because you had other bigger priorities and yeah. you made a conscious choice. So so good for you. And like, you know, like I said, it won't, who knows how I'll be back on TV in which form or way, but I like want to tell people too. I feel like everyone thinks they're like, your life is over after Vanderpump. Like <laughs> I was living my life before Vanderpump, had a career before Vanderpump. I still have a career, still doing things. I'm still living my life. And honestly, one of the fifth reasons why I didn't sign was because I haven't had a summer since 2019. Because it was just Vanderpump every fucking year. And I was like, I want to have a summer this year where I travel and do the things I want to do and not be on a schedule that I don't want to listen to. Makes sense. So, um, do here you we are. think, uh, are you aware of the Christmas song that Sheena and Lala came out with recently? I am not. Uh, well, Did it- they? Okay, I'll be not nice. I mute. Everybody, Vanderpump besides Ariana and Katie. Just protecting your mental health. And uh, yeah, you, I just after it... the show, I muted all account. I, after I decided not to sign the contract, I muted all Bravo accounts, all everything, just for the like six months. I took that job working for a doctor. I was like, I'm gonna literally get myself so out of this world to like heal certain things and not be like you know, because then you go back and forth. I feel like if I would have watched things, I'd be like, okay, maybe. I, Maybe I want to yeah. go back on and go film, you know, or like, oh, that's not right. I want to go say something. So it's really just kind of protect your mental health. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know about their song. Well, but what is it? Is so it basically, good? Uh, I haven't, I haven't heard Have the song. I've, I've read the lyrics, but somewhere in the lyrics, they, ba- they talk shit about Rachel. They, and my question to you, mm. cringe, like get over it, move on or fair game. Because Ooh. honestly, I think it's a little cringe that Lala and Sheena Love them to death as people, but like maybe if it came came from I don't know. No, I think it's cringe. I think it's a little. I think it's a little lame. Yeah, like I feel like we don't. I feel like Christmas is positive and happy and joyous, and maybe they should have done a shout out in a positive way for Ariana and not. Yeah, they should have made a Halloween song if they wanted to talk shit about Rachel. Yeah, and I feel like in the holidays, like right now, (laughs) it's like Ariana. They could have done something cute, like. Dancing through the snow, like dancing through dancing stars. I don't know. Something for her instead of giving more attention to Rachel. That's what she's going to be, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Rachel. Yeah, Rachel. I feel like we could no, I don't like that. I think that's lame. But it doesn't surprise me. Why? Well. I would like you to say it. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like they they love to sing, right? Oh, it's because they love to sing. They love to sing. I, they, <laughs> they make lots of songs. They could have sang about anything. They, yeah. So why, why doesn't that line surprise you about Lala and It's Sheena? just like who they are, you know? It's who just their they? personality. Which is? Singing songs that are cringy. I don't know. I just feel like... Their personality is singing cringy songs. Yeah. Like, you know, that's just them. Well, yeah. on Ariana's appearance on Watch What Happened Live... Does she like it? She did say that... Sheena is the biggest pot stirrer of this season. Oh, like shocking. You, how do you think this season is going to go down knowing that we're starting it? Obviously, with I feel like, like if I went, if I said how the season went down, I might like be, you know, those, those TikToks where like she predicted the future. She knew. So I don't want to say too much, but I felt like I know that Sheena's already going to fold because that's just her personality. What do you mean by fold? Like she's probably going to be friends with Tom. Mm. Well, according to Ariana, Brock cozies up to Sandoval the most. Oh, that doesn't surprise me either. It's her husband. Oh, we so. can start talking shit. <laughs> we can start going. Brock Talk is... Talk your shit. I, you know, I'm not going to... No, you know I'm not. But <sighs> I <Charlie>. does... <laughs> I had to think about my... You know what? Fill it in. <laughs> doesn't surprise me. Why? 
Well, that's who he always has been. Which is? Like, he's like a payroll husband. Like, you know, he like does whatever she wants him to do. Payroll husband. Bam! I just feel like, I don't know, they bother me, honestly. And they just think it's weird, cringy, desperate, thirsty vibes. Like, like even when Brock just saw me and my fiance the other day, it was like the questions people ask you, you can tell they're not genuine. Mm -hmm. It was like, so what are you guys up to? It's like, why are you asking me that? Like, like what, what moves are you making? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, are you trying to determine like what? Like what I'm doing after Vanderpump, if it's whether you like me enough or not, or, or I'm like whether worth your worthy time. your time. Yeah. And it's like just things like that. I'm like, ew. And I just don't like it. And I just, and I don't know. I'm a firm, like loyal person. I think I've made that very clear. I think you can be nice and cordial and be an adult and be like, oh, hey, like, you know, like he's here. You're not going to fight in public all the time, you know? But like, being buddy buddy and cozying up especially like you can't be making these songs and then being best friends with like Tom. like that just doesn't make any sense to me but it doesn't surprise me yeah it's all i feel like the only thing we're going to probably see is like katie be the best friend at all of them katie and is then a james will queen. probably have yeah and that's why i've always said, liked katie she said love james katie. i talking love the katie most behind people's back james does i could see that too that makes sense. But James is also like in his world a lot. Like James lives in James's world, which that's why I kind of like James because we're born a few weeks apart. He's an Aquarius, which I don't like to be those people. But I feel like kind of says something like Aquariuses are kind of in their own world a lot because I am. And it's like comes off very aloof. And I feel like talking shit, like he's like very straight up, where right? I feel like he just says things to people and it can be perceived as talking shit because they're maybe not there. But I don't think he has a problem saying it to them either. I really like Allie, though. I hope. I really like Allie, too. I really hope she does Seems good. very sweet. Yeah, and so, keeps herself out of that and just headstrong. <laughs> <laughs> what else does this say? Uh, it says, uh, yeah, Katie's cries. the most loyal. Okay, I see. I could... Lala cries the most. Oh, interesting. Most jealous of Dancing with the Stars, Tom. All of them. <laughs> the no, star really got me. <laughs> I feel like everyone low-key is jealous. I mean, oh, if she's sure. the only oh, when, Dancing with the Stars I, contestant to have been on the show. I saw her. When I saw her, I was like, like, you are a performer. Like, this is sick. It was so cool seeing her. I, also, Charity. They're yeah. actually very good. Charity, they, They're they both did very well. Really well dancers. They both went to the finals, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I literally was like sitting in my chair, like starstruck by their performances because they were so good at dancing. But I feel like everyone's low-key jealous. The biggest flip-flopper is Schwartz. Duh. I mean, that's kind of goes without. That's saying. like his his first name should be flip flop. Tom <laughs> Schwartz. <laughs> he does Tom look doesn't like even know what's going the only, on. The only time Schwartz like takes a stand is when he can throw a drink on someone. That's about it. The only it's when it's against Katie. That's the only yeah, stand yeah. he takes. Exactly. Is that Katie does not deserve to be defended. Yeah, that's about. That's it. the one thing he's strong on. Do Honestly, you, I could have guessed all of this. Do you think uh, I should have done it, huh, man? It probably would have been fun. I had so many fun ideas. You Maybe s- next season. I should have. I, I needed a break. I probably yeah. would have I mean, had. You're not, you're not I would have had a. Um, which is who had the bad breakdown on Real Housewives in New York City? Kelly? Years mm. back. Fire Island, whatever. That would have been me. I would have had a breakdown this summer. And then my fiance has probably been like, we're not getting engaged yeah. after this. You know, every this time we do. not the summer we thought <laughs> we we're going to have. Every time now and I do some sort of red carpet interview with you know, whoever. There's yeah. always some sort of random like, would you guys ever do a reality TV show? Like no one, for the record, no one, there, there are no conversations being had about yeah. this to be, be clear. But like, I would never with Natalie for the reasons we just talked about. Like you put such exposure, you put unnecessary stress on your relationship. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. There is no way getting we around it. We fought the hardest yeah. during Vanderpump. Like we just were unhappy. Like we didn't like each other. It's stress that your relationship yeah. wouldn't have if you didn't do it. And some people are able to get through it, but it is not in the best interest of your relationship. That's just mm-hmm. a fact. If you are going to have to have a relationship on TV, the whole point is drama. And yeah. so either you are going to be willing to poke holes in your relationship or other people are going to do it. So I think I really respect your decision. If you go back on, we'd love to watch you. You're a star. But maybe we'll do like, the wedding segment. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But then it's also, you you have to invite all those people. 
See, like, that's the thing I'm so grateful for because... <laughs> you have to come up with a reason why Tom Schwartz <laughs> isn't invited, but he's going to show up anyways. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, oh, sorry, my fiance was, like, going back now, like, we talked about it because my engagement was on BravoCon. So he was going back and forth with Bravo and the producers, and he was, like, it was his 30th birthday weekend, so he's like, I don't mind, I'll change my birthday. And I was like, in, the day is I'll change my birthday. I'll change my birthday. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'll change my birthday weekend. Like, it's fine. Like, we don't have to do this. And I was like, no, like, this is point A of like them controlling everything. And I'm not going to be able to even go to your birthday. But I would also would have had an engagement without all of my friends there because it would have to be filled with Bravo or I mean with Vanderpump because they were filming a show. And that moment would have been taken from me and been used for Vanderpump. And I feel like not moment in my like lifetime you know like a core memory that I had with my really good friends and my close family members not like we've seen every engagement and not like just the group the of that were fight, the, yes on a about pump, something you know totally it would have ended up in a fight somewhere or something silly would have happened and I'm glad that my memory is mine and now I can go back I'm like I'll do a wedding you know whatever I'll disinvite some people for a wedding you know you go. fuck it I'll have Lala officiate let's really switch some things up in <laughs> Reverend Lala. <laughs> Reverend Lala. I think she's mad at me still, but maybe Lala? We, I think I think everyone is like, I don't know. For not doing it or no, I saw when I was at the producers, they told me something. I think there was like the behind the scenes episode. Uh for uh, for season ten, like the like so like an episode that I got aired that didn't like a, sure, sure. I don't know. Oh, when they were doing the yeah. Yeah, I honestly don't know because I muted everybody. And then I was like, oh, she unfollowed me the other day. <laughs> I, oh. I just realized it. it probably happened a long time ago. So, but that's okay. We will all talk about it one day. I'll water under the bridge. I love everyone on that show, though, in a sense of like, I did that experience with them and I did things with them and I learned a lot about myself and they saw me in certain places in my life, probably that were not that great. And I still did that with them and they were still a part of my life, whether I like it or not. So. And they always will be. That's probably how you feel about Bachelor, right? A little bit? Sure, for sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm friends with some people. Yeah. And then the rest. I also know. wish maybe I came in a different era, like when they were a little bit younger. Sure. Because maybe I would have made like more connected relationships. Like I feel like I would have been like Stassi's friend more. Like, you know, like, yeah. I just came in on like a really weird time. Also, I feel like there is like this kind of unspoken loyalty with the OG cast. And 100%. I think, I think you would have been a target potentially. Maybe if I would have came in though, like the yeah. same like everyone else. I don't know, but yeah, who knows? Well, I hope it's a really good season for them though. And I wish everyone good luck. And do you think do you uh, there's think, a season 12, 13, 14, and 15? Do you think there's a chance it can live up to, I mean, nothing will live up to Scandal, but do yeah. you think. From what you know and what you can share, what's your level of excitement? How excited should we be drama wise, scale of one to 10? I think everyone should be excited because they're back. So a 10. Okay. Because I feel like this is also going to be like, you know, I really respect Ariana for showing up this season because I can't imagine how hard this is going to be for everyone. I'm sure there's, it's just going to be icky, you know? And that's a really hard position for her. And she's going to be in a room consistently with uncomfortable people. And I just feel like that's going to be in itself very interesting to watch how that plays out. Okay. Yeah. So let's get into some enough housewives. about this. Yeah. Let's get into some house. Let's talk about the dinner party. Wait. So what do you want to talk about? What's your favorite? Who's your favorite Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Oh, it's Salt Lake City. Okay. Sorry. I want to mm. talk about Salt Lake City. Yeah, I fucking great. love Salt Lake it's City. It's the best. It's Who so I good. like enjoy watching the yeah. most. Is Should we probably... do a power ranking? Yeah, let's do a ranking. A power ranking. How do we want to do it? Yeah, let's. How do we want to do it? Favorite or like least favorite? Well, I love all of them. How long have you been watching it? So, I started with them from the beginning. Oh, wow. Okay. Because that's when I first got into like I was like I need to watch what I'm a part of. Yeah. So you've seen it all. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah, everybody says Salt Lake City is the like the gateway fun... drug of housewives. Like every everybody you and talk I'm to is like the start New York with this too. one. Yep. Salt Lake, I said last week that Salt Lake seems like a spoof in the best possible way <laughs> like an of, SNL skin. Of, of Beverly Hills. Yeah, I could see like, that. It's a, all these women were huge Beverly Hills Housewives fans mm -hmm. and got their own opportunity. And this is. And the, they checked in. Yes. 
Lisa Barlow said, I'm clocked in, babe. So, all right, how do we want to do this power ranking? Do we want to go first to worst or like, how, how, how do, what's the category? <sighs> you ladies decide. I don't know. I mean, I think my personal favorite to watch on this show is Mary. Mary? She's so funny. She doesn't give a fuck. She's like her authentic self. Yes. Like them in Palm Springs when Angie and <laughs> Whitney are like, come sit with us. And she's like, stop talking to me like that. I don't like to be talked to. I don't, I'm not coming over there. It's I like, think it's hilarious. <laughs> I know, but I also so kind of respect her boundaries. No, because they are like when she That's brought scary. up <laughs> what when she walks out while we're there, she, they were in Palm Springs. And she like clearly said it to a producer. She's like, that's scary. When they, they said remember. something to her and she just, she just I can't like remember. Funny shit. But I feel like they did attack her and like her church situation when she did welcome everybody in. And granted, like her situation probably isn't ideal for everybody, but like. That situation she, being her married to her grandfather? Well, it's not her grandfather. It's her oh, step grandfather. Yeah. Well, when she left. Not by blood. Okay. You're talking about when she left the show, right? Yeah. Because she was on in season one and two and then mm-hmm. left for season three oh. because they were, the women were attacking like. And they were saying she was like a scammer and like all these like fraud things. and About like, what? About her church and like where the money and just all this and like that she was like responsible for like getting someone killed. Like that's kind of like big. So for her to come back, I feel like she's like she's funny, not like by intention, but she really like has to kind of put like these walls with these girls. She hates them all. And that's what makes it even better. She doesn't even and associate. They, they she's allow like impom- it though. Like they... I would not allow someone to call me inbred to my face like that. Like she, <laughs> they don't ever fight back with her. I think that they're scared of her. I think that they're scared of her and Meredith. No Meredith? one fights back with Meredith. Oh, I hate the way Meredith handles situations, though. I wish she would just like fight. I wish she would yeah. argue, but she just gets up and walks away, and it like pisses me off so well, bad. Well, it kind of just seems screams. like gaslighting, right? Like a little bit like shutting you down if yeah. you speak, and it's kind of like not you're fair. talking to me disrespectfully. I'm not. It's yeah. like, well, you just accused <laughs> yeah. my husband of sleeping with men. And she's like, like no. How do you no, want me no, to no, come at you right respectfully? Now. Yeah. Well, she she does me, it. Learn to talk to me with respect. She mm-hmm. does it in a fake accent. That's what gets me. It's like that's, that's not, that accent doesn't exist. She made it up to sound like proper and like elegant. That's and, like, what I said to Nick when the iconic scene of her and Palm Springs, you can, you can leave. leave. <laughs> and then she's like talking to, yeah. to Lisa outside and her husband. She does like pull out these like this weird British kind mm-hmm. of accents when she's And then she arguing. always brings up like the kids, the struggling kids. Like how <laughs> dare you like you can't talk to me that way. There are kids in wheelchairs. If it's like we know, I but feel like, like why does it have to do with this particular topic? <laughs> Everyone must be drinking a lot of wine and something. I don't know. The last episode or when they were in Bermuda and she was like in the bed dying. I was like, what is I'm also surprised no one's like bringing that up, like being more aggressive of like, why are you like slurring your words and like asleep for 10 hours in the bed? Like no one's like addressing everyone's just like Lisa's like, oh, she's in the room. She'll be fine. I think people are low key kind of scared of Meredith. That's what I'm saying. I feel like they're very scared. And she has like a law degree. So I feel like she turns it on. Well, they literally are like, don't fuck with Meredith. She will spread a nasty rumor. If she makes threats, she's like, I know I have tea on you. Warn them. She puts out the warning. And that warning and those rumors aren't like little like, oh, I wouldn't trust them. It is. I think your husband's sleeping with other men. Like that one was heavy. That was that one stressed me out. That was I don't wrong. like when the housewives fight like that. I'm like, now we're getting too deep. First of all, or, the, or like, Lisa it, giving sexual favor, favors for jazz tickets. Yeah, yeah like, that was well, holy for shit. Jazzies. Yeah. <laughs> and even if these rumors were true, it would be horrific to put it out there on national fucking television. Yeah, like let's fight about whether or not it's okay to call someone a dolphin trainer. <laughs> like that's yeah. the housewives like yeah. back and forth that or, we want. Or the fight about Lisa not wearing glam for the whole drag queen show. I where, understood that though. Why? Because Trixie Mattel was when there. Yeah, but when you're older and you have like sensitive, maybe she had like sensitive skin, no, you know, and didn't I, want that type of makeup on it. I am the king at not being fun when I don't want to be fun. <laughs> Like, I have no problem. I being love like, Trixie, by the way. I mean, I would have done true. it. Um, yeah, goes with that. I would have done have it. No problem being like, no, nah, I don't feel like it. Everyone do shots? No, nah, not for me. Maybe I she have, was feeling insecure. I have no problem about that. But just own it and just say, I'm not going to do it. Just call it what it is. I'm not going to be fun. Just like, I don't yeah, feel but like, when Monica was thing. like, they're being wet noodles. And she was like, who's being a wet noodle? <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I put on and I am head to toe couture. 
Yeah. I have a Fendi bag and I have purple eyeshadow on. What do you need? Yeah. <laughs> I it's love just like, don't sometimes. be obnoxious about you not wanting to be fun. Just Wait, we your... didn't do our ranking. I like Heather the best. You like Heather the best. I think she's the most grounded and self-deprecating. And I she loved can, her reunion. Look, she can way. be crazy as, as, as much as the next one. But like, I trust Heather the most. Oh, really? That's interesting. You trust Heather the most? I think she's like the most self-aware of the housewives where she like she knows this is all kind of ridiculous but like fuck it yeah you know and i feel like all the other ones are i don't know how self-aware they are i think you have to rank by like good tv yeah maybe that but heather's still pretty good fucking tv no yeah mary mary's the best TV. mary's the, i feel like mary's hilarious i love i do love lisa barlow i trust monica the least really what about I don't know. What about Monica? Do you trust? Maybe because she's so open that she does. I mean, the affair thing, I don't trust people who have affairs, period. So like if you have affairs, I don't. With her brother-in-law. Yeah, I don't really trust you, but But I do think she's beautiful and she's fun. Even if we weren't going to completely categorize anyone who's ever had an affair, just because, you know, you know, maybe some people can heal. I'm just saying like, yeah, you know, all affair people die. But. But to your point, when Monica was talking, when she was telling Heather early in the season, she was like laughing about it. This is not someone who really f- sounds like someone who's like, I really fucked up. I destroyed my entire family. This is something my kids are going to have to like watch on television. No, I don't think she cares. I don't think she gives a fuck. No, I don't think she gives a fuck. I think this bitch <laughs> has one mission and it's to be the star of Real House of Salt Lake City. Yeah. And but she's doing it. Yeah. And then when she was crying because she had to buy a Louis Vuitton bag to fit in. What a, you what also a, can rent some. Now. What an amazing like, rent sure. bags now. I feel like that's weird. No, I know, but what an a like what an amazing talent to victimize yourself because you had to buy a five thousand dollar bag. A five thousand dollar bag because <laughs> like you wanted to fit in. It's like, well, that's okay. Which, when she said that, I really didn't take them to be a group where they really cared about that. In a sense, like I feel like if she had a cheaper bag, I don't think any of them would be like no. Oh my God, she doesn't have a Louis. Like I don't, even though they are a little bit, you know, into brands, I just don't see them. It's still Utah. Like no, they she snowboard, wanted to buy the you know? bag. She had the bag and then she realized maybe it was over budget. So she had to justify yeah. it. And then she justified it by blaming all the other women. I mean, it kind of goes to like the dinner party for Beverly Hills where okay. they're talking about Kyle's ring and whatnot. And then Kyle looks at Garcelle and she's like, where's your necklace from Garcelle? And she's like, Zara. Zara. <laughs> yeah. I actually love I that. Love, I love that. That was great. And I was actually surprised that she like, and that's, it's funny because I feel like, so I feel like for a minute we couldn't really watch. It was like an unsaid thing between the Vanderpump group. It's like, you don't watch Beverly Hills Housewives. You Why? Know? I think after Lisa left, it was just like, oh, it was just a vibe, you know, like it wasn't oh, like ever vibe. set. Yeah. Like, you know, when Lisa's like, I don't know. Lisa's like Lisa. She's mother. Yeah. She's like mm, looking at you like, are you going to watch that? But so Lisa might feel the same way about Beverly Hills Housewives as Taylor feels about Kim. Maybe. Yeah. That's okay. a great reference. Okay. Some could say. Some yeah. could say. On one could tell. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that dinner. Okay. One I'm going to say. What is going on with Kyle? Do you guys feel like her, like, is it like, go, is she going through something? Or well, is clearly. it, we know why is that she her and Mauricio are now separated. separated. Here, but my thing was in the beginning, it was like, why she was being so like, kind of made me like immature and like kiddish about it. Like all these like weird giggling about the tattoos. I was just like, say it, just say what's going on. I, I'm, I'm kind of going to defend Kyle here yeah? just because. Also, uh, I haven't watched in a while, so unfortunately, I'm new to this season. Unfortunately sense. for Kyle, that she she is obviously going through a d- public divorce. So all her other so peers sad. have the ability to be like, see, we were right, mm-hmm. you know, yada, yada, yada. That's and true. Being right has nothing to do with whether Kyle was ready at that time to talk about what was obviously going to be a very sensitive topic. Yeah. And so the whole debate is whether Kyle should talk about this or not. And it seems like all the other housewives are basically saying see we knew something was going on therefore we had the right to ask about it well, and it seems kind of fucked up when it comes to having the benefit of it's hindsight also well incredibly she, fucked up to like 
talk about someone's like it per, like to, if you perceive someone's body has changed like I don't think that's a good entry point for talking so, about yeah, you must be going yeah. for a divorce like, yeah. I think that's really unacceptable I think it's really toxic for anybody who does have like disordered eating or an eating disorder it is like any comments are harmful whether they are perceived to be yeah. positive or negative like it's just a bad entry point it made me really sad though when she like I'm actually devastated that they're breaking up like I really hope that they like figure it out or maybe work on things because I feel like they were such a big powerhouse couple in like LA but when she said that it's like almost that you guys like wanted my husband to cheat on me like you guys wanted that like like at the dinner she was like it's like almost like you guys needed that validation like oh Mauricio had to cheat on Kyle and I'm like that like, broke my heart for her because I felt yeah. like that's a really hard thing to do and that's why I was like maybe my side of things I wanted her to be more blunt with everything so it was just done and over with but from your point, I understand. No, yeah, yeah. Something is planting that seed of like, again, even if yeah. it were true, it's just like, you, that's so, again, this is all But I guess being also, filmed. I was going to say, it's also what you sign up for, right? They did it to I mean, Erica I, before. They did it to everyone. So it's kind of like. No, I, I, that's why like when I, sucks. when we talk about this, I just won't blame the show or producers because yeah. it's what the show is. But I, I, I can still hold like these other women or who, you know, your castmates to account because they, they can choose not to bring something up. Yeah. You definitely have a choice not to, you know, go there, so to speak, but it, you're right. It is the show. So like, if you do sign up for it, do you almost feel like they're doing it back to Kyle to be like, Oh, she's always badgered us about things. Now Maybe. we can badger her back, you know, like they're like, Oh, now it's my time to like hook one in. But really, the only person who's doing it is Sutton Sutton's. and like a little bit of Garcelle. Yeah. And it's like. Well, Dari, I guess, did it in a friend way in the beginning. Oh, she yeah, did totally. it as a friend. I did respect Dari when she was like, hey, if you don't mean to talk about this anymore, we won't talk about right, it. Right. Right. That's what you should do. Dari is a little fucking sneaky potster. She is. She is not her. as she is not as um, unmessy as she tries to come across. Like, what no. do you think of the whole upside down? What are, what are you, sweater shawl? <laughs> Listen, I appreciate. I think she was actually trying to tell her. I, she she came up to her and was like, "Hey, jacket. like she yeah. wasn't trying to call her out in front of everyone." She was like, she was. in the corner, like she, saying Denise's jacket's backwards." Yeah. Obviously, Charlie. she knows she's what? on. She has a microphone. You, she knows yes. cameras are around. There's no but such thing as whispering on reality how, television. How else was she supposed to but tell her that wanted, her jacket's upside no, down? You don't say anything. You just let Denise no, wear an upside down jacket. Yes, you yes. I wouldn't have noticed. No, it. it's the no. truth. It's like spinach stuck in your teeth. Yeah, you have to totally. The same the as same. spinach stuck it's in your the teeth. Same. It's was the same. Was it as obvious to you? And yes. To, it was. Yeah. Yes. And it made her look more of a, it like kind of encouraged the storyline that she was fucked up. Fucked up. You and I feel like she was trying aside. to save her from it. You could have pulled her in the bathroom. Cameras would have followed. You could have pulled her in the bathroom. The microphones are on. You they would have You could have pointed it. You could have literally said, babe, come into the bathroom. You could have taken it off her and put but it on. But that would have been, no, that. She, you Denise would have been like, no, I'm not going to the bathroom. She would have made a Yeah. And then they're like, what are they doing in the bathroom? I think the reason what she was doing. Because I think. Also, you do like, I would just muffle mine. But I would have. All I'm saying is, Dorit to to knew what she was doing. It. She I, knew she was calling her out. No, she was. No, she. Mm. I, don't I don't think she meant it in a I, malicious I think Dorit, way at all. It's also Denise was like, I, you, I know what you're doing. You're doing, and I, I, I felt like I understood where Denise was coming from. I know. You no. Know, okay. Actually, I will say about this. This is a prime example of why I think you should take a break from certain groups because you get in your head from the Bravo world, especially that everyone's out to get you and no one's your friend. And everyone's toxic and everyone around you is bad people and you can't get that out of your mind. So even someone saying, hey, fix your jacket, your mind automatically goes, you're coming for me. And that's what she did. I think that Denise made me. I mean, it's like you're like takes a break from the Bravo world for a year or two and then comes back. I mean, she films. did take a break, though. Yeah. She left like for two years. She left. Yeah. I thought it was only one year. It was two See, seasons. I was gone. Yeah. OK, so yeah, what were you but maybe even longer. I just, like three. <laughs> I just don't think that that's like if someone came up to me and was like, hey, like. Your tags, your jack, your it's inside out. It's your tag. I'd be like, oh, great, thanks. Like yeah. that's not something that you get like embarrassed about. That's not something that you feel. Like I think when you do about. a show like that, you do. Yeah. You feel but like everything that I everyone's think, doing is attacking you. Also, I don't think y you're not that self conscious of a yeah. person. No, I just think Denise obviously <laughs> was not in her right mind. Mm -hmm. I think Denise yeah. was whether it was her cold medicine, but she she had a flu. Who knows. Um, but I think because she didn't even do any of the THC either, so she, she did not. Mm -mm. Who did knows? Not. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever is going on, she went through. I think she took that 
in a, in a negative way. Yeah, and I don't 100%. think Dorit meant it that way. Do no. you think? Because I feel like in those situations, I think the best thing to do is to text someone. Like if my friend has something mm. like stuck in her teeth at a group dinner, like I'll text oh, her. Do, like, would that have been an option? Like, do you think they have phones? Well, sometimes you don't have your phone on you. So it just depends on the situation. I'm just saying when you're <laughs> mic'd up and the cameras are on you and you get called out, to Charlie's point, you realize this is all being filmed. Mm -hmm. And if you've been on a show long enough, like these women all have, they're like editing that scene in their head. They're like, they're going to do a flashback. Yeah. They're going to do this, going to do you that. You actually do think like I'm that. I'm going to look like a fucking fool. And like, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, this soundbite's now going to be used. Like sometimes in the moment, you'll be there and you'll be like, fuck. That is definitely going to be used differently now. Like, but if you think Denise, in that state of mind, was going to walk with Dorit <laughs> to a private bathroom, yeah, no, absolutely like, not. You're you got wrong. Me there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She was not gonna. She was not gonna trust she Dorit. Had, whatever no. was going on, even if she had even had spinach in her teeth, I don't think she would have been like, "Fuck you, Dorit." Yeah, it's your yeah. spinach, bitch. One hundred percent. You made the spinach. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like Dorit, though. I do too. I like her. I, like I enjoy that. watching They're her. I think she's I like beautiful. Erica, like, I think there's only one person I think that I like actually. Son? No, scares me is Erica. Like when that scene when she was like, oh, what's empathy? I was like, oh my God. I think that's her performance. Do you she think that's her? That's yes. why I'm, but I, I don't like people like that though. I don't like people who are performative and then take it down because then it's like when you're filming with them, they'll be like, oh, I, I didn't really mean what I said. That was just me performing. What she did in in the season, and you can't do that. No, I I think Erica. You can't always blame your character because this technically shouldn't be a character, right? It should be your real self. True, but I think Erica does herself a disservice often by performing and Me paints too. herself in a light that actually isn't who she is. I agree, but she is doing it, so you know it is. You know. I mean, in, in her events, she has like an alter ego, right? So there's mm -hmm. Erica Girardi and then there's Erica Jane. So Erica Jane is like her like aggressive, like I'm going to cuss you out, talk about my pussy. Like she said <laughs> oh things like God. that. Like that's her sweet boy. Justin, I don't know if you're I'm going to cuss you out. I'm going like, to talk about my pussy. No, like that's her thing. Like she would always say it and people would be like, you can't say that, you can't say that. And she's like, it's not me. That's Erica Jane. Yeah. Mm. So she excuses a lot that, of like. That, that's kind of bullshit. Yeah. No, sorry, that's my alter ego. That's, that's what I'm saying. You can't do that all the time. Hmm. Mm. Okay, what else? That's it, right? I think we kind of wrapped yeah, it up. Well, we let's, let's 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 finish our Salt Lake City power ranking. Oh God, I forgot. Mary won. Mary won. I'll, I'll let you two do it because I don't think we might not all agree. No, let's just do it all together. Should we? I don't, think, least, I don't think it's a universal thing. Yeah, yeah it's I very that, much. Well, that's a problem with well, housewives. It changes like it's like football. How ba about we'll ba go? What's yours? Mo I mean, who I enjoy to see on the screen, who I think is like best tv is mary monica and lisa are kind of tied yes same. meredith angie whitney heather that would probably be my exact same why list. why heather last because she's well she's no actually like, my stir up drama she's not like screaming at people and like you know like she's just like kind of i, I might move heather, like heather up a little bit i like heather so much because she's like a good soundbite for like I, she just makes she's like me, the word of reason yeah she kind of makes me laugh the way she handles like when she was it's like she's a really good mom she's like i yeah i've heard that rumor if you're a stylist in utah like i mean that she just has funny one-liners so i'm gonna say mary heather for entertainment monica lisa meredith and what's the, angie angie Wait. angie's just like so whitney's last for you yeah yeah, okay. I forget that Whitney's on. Yeah, this season Whitney's not like that. I guess I, like there's nothing really happening. Meredith maybe? drives me crazy. Crazy. I she is my least favorite person in the world. Right <gasps> now. You just ranked her as third. She's entertaining though. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Justin. What are your par power rankings with the criteria best TV? Lisa Barlow is my favorite. Yeah, Lisa Barlow. So I think it's bad. like, and if we take Angie K from last season, I think she has really good one-liners. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would go like. Lisa, Angie, Meredith. I like Whitney. So Whitney. So this is my other Monica. This is preference. This is is this your first? Are you starting where I'm starting? I watched season one. Okay. So I'm I'm starting in the current season. Yeah. This for anyone who's watched <laughs> them all. 
I like now that I've gotten into Bravo. I like starting. Everyone's forgetting about Jen Shaw. I like start. Well, I, I she was oh, good. familiar with her story, but it. I haven't watched her. I like starting in the current season and then going back. Yeah. To get like reference, it's kind of fun that way. Jen Shaw would top it though. Mm. She'd be at the top for a lot of people's lists. Yeah. Well, how long is she in jail for? Six years. Oh shit! Holy Around shit! There? She'll yeah. probably get let out by like early when they have good behavior. Maybe come right. How long was Teresa in there? Not that long. Not that long. Right? Like back, two years. Yeah, and then she came back like a bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's sick. Good for her. Charlie. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, really enjoyed so, having you again. So fun. Yeah, so much fun. Nice Please officially meeting you. Congratulations. Let my audience know where they can follow you, watch oh. your stuff, your content, whatever you're putting out. Um, everything you can follow me is just Charlie Burnett on all social platforms. Okay. And how do you spell Charlie? Just Oh yeah, C H A R L I. And then Burnett is B U R N E T T. Happy holidays, everyone. Yay. Hope you guys have a good little season. You. Thanks for having me. Uh, Cut out everything. I'm just kidding. Absolutely not. <laughs> Cut out all my uh, shit. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, be sure to tune in on Thursday. We have a great guest, the one and only Justin Sylvester from E! News, also an attendee at the uh, dinner party. He was, uh, I, I believe, Kyle's guest. So uh, we'll uh, talk with he's him. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's hilarious. He's, he's the best. Super fun. Also, when he said, <laughs> "He's," I, I don't so believe funny. he's uh, under any NDA for the dinner party. So we'll hopefully get some behind the scenes there. Plus, just kind of get his thoughts on all of the pop culture news going out in the world. Because obviously, at E News, he is tamped in. So we are excited to talk with Justin. That's Thursday. Uh, I think that's it. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at thevilefiles.com for all things texting office hours, asknick, mediation, and all of the above. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.